Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Welcome to Honey Badger Radio. My name is Brian. I'm here with Allison, and this is Maintaining Frame number 83. Yeah, feminists do not like that Gen Z men are going to... Uh, we're going to be looking at an article. I talked a little bit about this on the call-in show. I read through uh, the Guardian article on this subject and some of the stuff related to but this oh, has oh. started a conversation on, on the webs and other people <laughs> have been writing about it. So I thought, Excellent. yeah, yeah it'd be a good thing to look at. And yeah. for, for extra fun, I have bingo cards. So we're going to be looking at a video and I'm, I should, I'll share this tab with you. Well, okay. So um, what I was thinking, like, cause um, I yeah. haven't actually looked at the, the article, we could just, Skim through the article. Skim the article and then go to the video. Wow, this is a short article. No, wait, wait, wait. No, there's a continue reading. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, it is still a short article. I guess it's just because it's, yeah, it's somewhat short. Years. Yeah. I mean, uh, there isn't a ton that I think you can extrapolate, especially if you don't, if you don't really know what's going on and you're just like grasping, you know, mm. um, which I think that most yeah. people are doing. So because usually when they when we're talking about something the some way that some new way that women can be framed as victims it's indomitable the length is like they're they're basically writing war and peace and the and it's it's really turgid prose just yeah and she shivered in in a, in an opalescent horror as it <laughs> spun the web of patriarchal the cinema to i was like oh shut because you somebody slapped the thesaurus out of your freaking fingers yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> a thesaurus is a tool not a weapon like a human being. yeah <laughs> okay uh yeah so, so i was thinking we could go through like the article that this is all the kerfuffle is about and then we could could do bingo on the on the video and the video is what is the video the video is from well pearl davis uploaded it on her channel but it's a clip from gb news which is sort of like a british uh news show i think it's like an internet thing you know uh kind of like i don't know rebel media or one america network or something and they're talking to a panel of uh, this guy he's the he's just the host discussing this this revelation that essentially young generation z men are walking away from feminism like they don't they think it's bad for men they think it's done more harm than good and they're there mm. it's a significant number but it's not a majority it's still a very small number. like those those are rookie numbers you need to get those numbers up boys mm. you got to get those numbers up boys but but there but nonetheless you know it's still troubling and so he's talking with uh three guests at first it's pearl davis who you guys might know just pearly things and the other one is a woman named anna may mangan or mangan or something and she's like a feminist writer and then later on Tonner, connor tomlinson who is basically like um from the lotus eaters appears and they kind of have a three i don't want to say three-way because it's not at all sexual but they have a, uh, uh, you know, well, they, three way because there's a the, uh, the older the one host there. is not. Yeah, he's trying not to be a part of the conversation. Oh, I will I give him credit for that. He's he's not he's, an, a, you know, he stays out of it for the most. It's part. not really a three way when someone sits in the corner and spits on you. <laughs> yeah, no, just yeah, it's like one is not participating in any conceivable interpretation of the word participate. Right. Um, right. But yeah, like okay, so that's the video. Uh, why don't yes. you explain these bingo cards? Yeah. So the bingo cards. Um, well, you know, we've we've tried to do feminist bingo before, mm. and I fortunately have like a super useful tool that lets me draw right on the screen here. So I thought mm. I would use. What was that? Oh no, I'm going. Mm, mm. Oh yeah, it's a sounds, it's a whiteboard excellent. tool. So basically, I figure while we're watching the video, we'll wait and see if the feminist crosses off any bingo letters like, you know, you're a man with therefore your your opinion is invalid. Um, body shaming, the wage gap, you have a small penis, you know, the, the, the normal sort of like highbrow academic arguments that feminists make, you know, um, misogyny. That's a good one. Mansplaining. What? I'm yet to encounter. Like the thing is that they can they can do all kinds of 
Theosaurus, Thesaurus, Theosaurus. Yeah, Thesaurus. <laughs> Did you know about the ancient... <laughs> of the uh it's an ancient dinosaur known yeah. as the thesaurus yes God of damn. the uh dick dick Shonarinim period <laughs> um and the the uh diction diction dick dickolithic <laughs> <laughs> all right i gotta st- okay uh I'm, anyway so yeah we have one for them we when, have what was that when you're talking to them about like um all the all the nuance they can sling the thesaurus like the best of them, but the instant you start saying, "But what about the fundamental premises?" They're, they they start to yeah. hiss and make threat displays. Yeah, <laughs> their yeah. Fundamental <laughs> premises are just uh, you know it's like well let's assume the world is made of purple Legos. I don't even think there are purple Legos, but let's just assume that the world if the world was made and let's just assume it and then and then everybody gets socially ostracized if they don't agree that the world is made by purple legos and then all everything else follows from the world made by purple legos but you can't question that initial premise yeah. i mean you can pretty much prove everything if you just allow the person to define all the initial premises like and, and also conclusions anyway oh uh, yeah of course so yeah we have feminist uh feminist bingo and we'll basically listen for anything that might like activate the uh the card we have red pill lit uh bingo because that could be fun like what are the things that you predict pearl might say during this discussion things like evo bring up evo psychology uh top g that's basically just code for andrew tate because he always comes up when these things are being discussed um Mm -hmm. women should probably be adults those are like some red pill things men men can be victims of domestic violence and so on and then we have trad con bingo uh, which i put in old timey letters and it's basically things like, uh, is it that time of the month? The red pill is bad. Uh, we believe in real equality. <laughs> Women most affected and m- both sides. Those are just some examples of what mm. I predict, you know, will uh, come up. And we'll see who wins the bingo game. Yeah. Um, yeah so, yeah. yeah. And where's the men's rights bingo? Well, I guess the red pill bingo has men's rights stuff in it, but none of the people on the panel are really. I Pearl's the closest thing to an MRA on the panel, really. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, she talks about mostly like things like relationships, and she gets a lot from guys like Kevin Samuels. But, but um, there until yeah. we actually have like MRAs on there, this is the best we're going to be able to do. Yeah, because the thing is, can't we talk about getting services for male victims of rape and domestic violence without always having to have a position? On the Nineteenth mm-hmm. Amendment, <laughs> but Kevin is like, you know, that's not really relevant. Yeah, you know, maybe we can deal with divorce and and child custody and alimony and all of this other stuff without constantly circling back to that one topic. Yeah, you know. Well, you know, it, it is the most. The thing is, is that it's going to come up because it is the most like. Yeah, I know. Radical, <laughs> and so this is useful for the people who either are the feminists or they want to maintain the status quo, which means they are the feminists. So, yeah. Okay. All um, right. All right. Okay, but now so you want to start with the article? Yeah. Cause we want to discuss, we want to actually give like a grounding on what this video is about. Right. Yeah. And we want sure. to have a little commentary on the, on the general subject before we, sure. we get into the, the fun stuff, <laughs> the fun yeah. stuff. <laughs> But by some definition of the word fun okay <laughs> yeah all right so maybe you should think some things before we oh right yes i should yeah. think the things okay so uh well i actually don't have anything up right at the moment but however well just the general you... super chow stuff yeah i also if you would like to support the show on an ongoing basis which is really helpful like honestly subscriptions are the most helpful uh please go to feedthebadger.com slash subscribe and you get some wonderful benefits as a result of subscribing. For example, you can listen to us at a, at a greater length and have conversations with us in the after shows, uh, depending on your subscription level. You have access to the after shows. You know, just five dollars a month gives you access to all of the after shows as well as bonus content. There is a raging in the tubes that is already being enjoyed by our current patrons. So if that sounds like something you'd like, if you don't know what the hell raging is, it, it, you're missing out. Sign up and find out. So feedthebadger.com slash subscribe. And if you would like to send us a message at any point during the show, 
you can go to feedthebadger.com slash just the tip here this is the thing we need like a way to generate random bingo cards for people yeah you know I mean? I, i'm i'm sure there's a way i had to fill these out yeah but like yeah. there must be a way a... to make a list of like 38 talking points and then, and then shuffle them... them i'll i'll figure it out i'll figure it yeah. out there is a way probably then... maybe ai yeah, okay. can help yeah and and then and then people can play along at home because yeah. that's the fun part but anyway if you have a message throughout the show that you want to send us you want us to read on air you can go to feedthebadger.com slash just the tip i almost there forgot there for a moment <laughs> and uh send us uh whatever whatever your thoughts you have um you get the full benefit of avoiding you tiptoeing through away or actually not even tiptoeing completely uh, circumventing youtube's comment enhancement system and we get the full benefit of whatever funds you send us because youtube doesn't take half so feedthebadger.com slash just the tip uh, again, send us a message there to show us we're not throwing or throwing our voices into the void. Boy, that was awkward. <laughs> Yelling into the void. There you go. That was less yeah. awkward. That's All better, right. I guess. Yeah, it is. Okay, so All feedthebadger.com slash subscribe to come join our community and enjoy our after shows and all that good stuff. And feed the badger up just the tip to send us a comment. All right, let's go. All right, all right. Let's uh, let, yeah. Let's go ahead and get into article first. So, bringing that up on the the Greenaroo. So this okay. So the one I read on Friday was from the Guardian. I think this is kind of like a um, a repost of it. You know, like they saw the article and they're making an article out of the article. But I could be wrong. Oh, so sure. it says. Woke Gen Z men are actually more likely than baby boomers to believe feminism does more harm than good, research says. There's a picture of the top G. That doesn't count as part of the bingo card. I'm just going to skip that. Gen Z has often been touted as the most inclusive generation yet. It's the demographic that's leading discussions around mental health, sexual experiences, and politics. The new research shows that feminism doesn't make the cut in their progressive views. <laughs> for, <laughs> Sorry, for growing... Boy. What was that? <laughs> well, I mean, if it is... I don't know that, like... I, I, well, I'm, I'll get into it later. Um, for a growing cohort of young men, the radical belief that women should be allowed the same rights, power, and opportunities as their male counterparts is even harmful... That's according to a new study from King's College, London's Way policy. to poison the well! Holy yeah. Batman! A good... Like, holy well poisoning, Batman! Yeah. Good lord. Like, right in the second paragraph, you've just completely discredited your approach. For growing cohort of men, the radical belief that... Insert my alleged yeah. interpretation Bum Bumper sticker feminism. sentiment. Women are human. The radical belief that women are human. <laughs> um, yeah. And honestly, I think the reason why you're losing people is because you consistently present the radical, the, the belief that, you know, not hating women is good as radical rather than yeah. just the bog standard for a human being. And people are tired of it, especially young men. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, that's according to a new study from King's College London's Policy Institute and Global Institute for Women's Leadership in partnership with Ipsos UK, which has uncovered that older men actually have more progressive views on the equality of the sexes than the next generation of men. Perhaps surprisingly, Gen Z men are more likely than older baby boomers to believe that feminism has done more harm than good. In fact, one in four UK males aged 16 to 29 believe it is harder to be a man than a woman, and a fifth of those who have heard of the self-proclaimed misogynist, the self-proclaimed, okay, whatever, Andrew Tate took look favorably, favorably upon him. So th this is, um, it's interesting because the article I looked at, or the one that I read through on Friday of last week, was not, it was about feminism in the same in terms of like what it was concluding as as problematic but it was really about like not just the direction that generation z men are going which is away from feminism but it's they're also like 
a, moving away from progressivism in general. And women, young Generation Z women, are moving more feminist. They're going further, you know, uh, in progressive, uh, in a progressive direction. So this isn't just, this isn't just like men are less enthused with feminism. And plus, they're still largely in favor. Like, like the there's just fewer of them. Like there's, you know, it's still like what what is it that they said one. Uh, let me go back to this because it's a, to put it in perspective. It's not like like the G Gen Z men are just like based all over the place. They're basically like less fringe than the previous year than the millennials, but um, they're still like pretty. You know, like it's not it's not a majority. It's not even like yeah, but it's, it's moving not, towards it. It's moving towards it. Yes, yes. But what I'm saying is is that they're making it seem more catastrophic than it is. Like it's oh, like twenty percent or, or or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, and yeah, and then they're saying like you know, um, uh, one in four. So it's twenty five percent. Yeah, believe that it's harder to be a man than it is to be a woman. Well, okay, can we can we like hear that out, or is that just like I can't believe it and that's it? Maybe mm -hmm. maybe they have a point. And I mean, no. one in four is still too low in my opinion. I mean, I don't think you should be making the uh we should be playing the victimhood olympics but if you feel like men have issues that are unique to men then that they should be that they're not getting the appropriate amount of attention and women's issues do then you could conclude that it is harder to be a man well it's, it's it's really it's fundamentally simple like the the role that men play in society is the value that they're given to society so when you take that role away from men and and offer it to women then you have the question, well, how are we going to value men? And that's yeah. it, that that's it. I mean, that that that, that is the bottom line. I yeah. also want to point out that they're making hay out of the fact that a fifth of those who have heard of Andrew Tate look favorably on them. So, you know, of all the people who like it, Andrew Tate, about 20% are are like, yeah, he's okay. Exactly. Like, favorably cuz I looked at the weird. actual I looked at the actual statistics and it's not like they're in love with him. It's basically no. they're either they're either like, well, whatever, he's okay. You know, that's it. Like they're not just like I want to be like that guy. Like but it's some are, but it's still a small percentage. It's only 20% of, like of the people who've heard of him are like, yeah, he's okay. Like yeah. 20%. Yeah, I mean, it's not even not a, exactly, a high number. It's not exactly like it But But the 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 thing is though, it's it's the tool they're using. Yeah. So like that's why when they say, oh my God, 20%, oh my God, self-described, self-proclaimed misogynist. So they're trying to create like, you know, a storm in a teacup, basically. Well, considering like, they're trying to... a whipping boy for a psycho. Like, have you, yeah, have that's... you read their conversations? Like there's this woman, uh, I forget what her name is. She actually has the, mo the, the lion's share, apparently the lion's share of the charges. And uh, when you read their conversations, she sounds like an absolute psycho. Like they they invited in some kind of mob enforcer, and they're just like they're in the cage with this this tiger, and they're like, how how do we get this woman not to eat us? <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, what it, that's actually sort of it, it's sort of it's sort of darkly hilarious that it 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 feels when you read those those that commentary, it feels like the Tate brothers are in the cage with a tiger. Like they just mm -hmm. accidentally came across a real hardcore, violent um, criminal, and uh, now they are stuck with her, and they don't. They're like, oh, oh, oh please, please, okay, uh, it's okay. Do we don't have to do that? You know, the, it's actually really like, if you're into black comedy, that's some serious black comedy. But anyway, yeah, you know, like may, maybe he has the right to be a little bit of a misogynist, considering he's in some ways it sounds like he's being eaten alive by one of those women that he got in business with right. um you know like <laughs> not that he would ever admit such a thing but let's 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 move on all right you know? we'll just keep going but my my point is is that um firstly it's not happening that drastically i think in fact i think it's women are uh because when i when i went through i looked at the studies and it's it's gen z women are are moving more radically more feminist like way faster than the boys and the boys are like some of them are kind of rejecting it but mo for the most part they're staying somewhat consistent sure to the previous generations the general what? 
Is are you sure that's specifically feminist or just the general progressive? Well, I could I would say generally leftist, but that's still yeah, generally leftist. It's fe it's yeah, but it's feminist at its base. Like it's based in yeah. that. It's like the old, although the it's, whole... it feels like like there's a there's there feminism is tearing itself apart over the current. Well, the gender class. politics is yeah, like... it's tearing itself apart over the gender politics. Yeah. So you know, it might actually be even though we're watching them rocket into radicalism it's almost like you're watching your alcoholic uh aunt just totally <laughs> destroying her life and you're like you know yeah yeah she's she's utterly no no don't enable it don't don't just let her hit rock bottom just let her hit let let her hit the the wall and then yeah. maybe maybe she'll wake up in a puddle of her own vomit and, and piss and say hmm this isn't really the life i want to live <laughs> Well, you that's what I mean? that yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, uh, I got yeah, I got a I got some super chats. I'm like, uh, Albert Data Retro says, any chance you could post the card on Facebook? Two dollars, thank you. Um, not now because I'm doing a show. Sorry. Um, you'll have to follow along unless I figure out a way to distribute bingo cards to people. We're just doing it this way. Iggy Thunders gives us five dollars, thank you, and says, I'm just in time for the blue pill bean flickathon. <laughs> and then I got there was a super chow from today, but it was before the show. Uh HBR News number 439, why not Zoidberg? Why not Zoidberg? Gave us five dollars and said, Boy Scouts of America, why not Tomboy Scouts of America? Why not? Um, okay. So now let's get back to the article. Thank you guys for these chats and super chows. Uh not expected. The data is in stark contrast to what most believe about men today versus their pale stale and male predecessors the public was mo yeah and, and that statement right there doesn't actually quantify why more and more men are getting fed up with your shit like you're literally telling them why they're fed up with you the public was most likely to think the oldest group of men believe equal opportunities for women have gone too far the research said however millennial men followed by gen zers were significantly more likely to actually feel that way so even the millennial men, and this is the thing that I think when people are, are, I think that when, when these people are projecting like, oh, how progressive is this generation or that generation? I feel like they're not looking at what the men are saying. I think they're just looking at what the women are saying and they're going off of that. And then when they, when they get data from the men, it surprises them. Maybe the men are, you know, like they want to keep their job. So they just agree. Yeah, sure. I believe in equality for women. I believe I should give up my job so a woman can take it. You know, and sure. Take away my. Who want to have uh, stay at home? <laughs> Let, let's reverse and all of the uh, all of the supposed social prohibitions against mm -hmm. uh, men working. So you know, allegedly women had all of this pressure not to work, and fair enough, maybe they did. And however, there was a corresponding pressure, social and legal, for men to take care of them. So let's let's reverse that pressure, make it so men have significant pressure against them working, but there's no social or legal expectation that w women then take up the slack of taking care of them financially. That's yeah. sure to work. Yeah. God damn. Okay. Let's let's All right. Uh, it's clear that young men who were witnessing the push to pull women up the ranks are worrying about their own future careers. Around 20% of Gen Z men think it'll be much harder to be a man than a woman in 20 years time. In comparison for men over 60 years old, this drops to just 9%. So, um, yeah, I don't think, see, that, that, this is another thing that I, I can't, I can't stand that I see a lot. There's this assumption that because men are witnessing women pull up the ranks, they're worried about their future careers. I don't think that's really what men are worried about. I think what men are worried about is that they're not going to be in a position to be a provider that women will find attractive because other women are essentially like getting their jobs. And unless the men go into some like field that women are just not in. So if you're a man and you're interested in working in accounting or administration or, you know, some other area where you could you could as a man get a job but women could also get the job I, like i i guess what i'm saying is is that i don't think that men are generally only thinking about the dollar i think 
they're thinking about how do I build something stable enough to raise a family and be like pretty satisfied with it. And these people are always talking about it like there's something else going on. Like, you know what I'm saying? Am I like that? Like um, that men hate the idea that women are achieving. Yeah, um, that they I hate the idea that women are achieving and not necessarily that, that power. women are going to be their their choices are going to depend on where the man is at. And so they're like, you know, they're uh, limiting like they're not going to marry down unless we actually like, you know, put put that reality out there so that women are prepared for it. You know, mm. well, yeah, they're not going to marry down and men like here's the thing that a lot of the people who who point at men and. And yeah, it is an insecurity. It's it's like you are asking Gen Z men to do the equivalent of of whacking off their breasts for women in terms mm -hmm. of being attractive, in terms of feeling attractive and being attractive. Right? And and you know that a woman who has lost her breasts has lost an aspect of her femininity. That's why insurers will actually pay for breast cancer survivors to have reconstructed breasts, right? Because they know it's there's a valuable aspect to their psychology in terms of how they feel attractive to the opposite sex and feel feminine and all of that stuff. Well, a, a job sort of functions similarly for a man. So Gen Z men are, are like looking at this and like, well, we're going to be castrated. We're going to have an essential part of our attractiveness to the opposite sex removed. There's got to be any kind of compensation for that. There's, they're not going to have a campaign like, uh, oh, uh, you know, beautiful even without or something like that. that that's never yeah. going to happen to men, right? So they're looking at a loss of an essential component of their attractiveness and their masculinity. And they're, it, it, it is agitating for them, right? Yeah, well, it's, that, it's a that bit pressure worrying. Hasn't yeah. changed. It, that pressure hasn't changed. Yeah, you know, it's it, upsetting. Uh, you know, like it's not, it's a source of how do women feel when they lose their breasts? Men feel mm -hmm. the same when they lose their careers, right? And, and not exactly yeah. the same, but I'm saying I'm trying to give a compassionate comparison that men, women mm -hmm. can maybe understand. I mean, imagine that. Imagine losing your breasts. Very similar to some of the feelings that men have facing the loss of a career or 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 bias against them, general bias against them in building a career. They know that's what makes them attractive to women, and and feminists and, and articles like this can can dance around the truth as much as they want. But men haven't invented the idea that women find them attractive for their income. They yeah. haven't invented that idea. Like th these guys aren't like, oh, you know, well, it, it's not the fact that they think that women don't aren't attracted to them because they aren't making enough money that's preventing them from getting dates. It's the fact that they aren't making enough money. And there's no way you can try to square that circle and make it work. Mm -hmm. It is just a reality. It's a statistical reality. You see it everywhere. Okay. Yep. If, if men made more money, more of them would be married. The, the biggest predictor for divorce isn't personality incompatibility. Isn't always oh, not loyal or funny or kind enough. It's he lost his job. All right. Yep. So this is this is this is just a reality. And we can't change that by putting our heads in the stand. Even if we wanted to change. Well, you know, if that was a goal, we'd have to recognize the reality in order to change it. Yeah. And be and, you know, sympathetic to that and not just act like, oh, you're just mad because women are getting stuff now. It's like, yeah, but when men get stuff, they give most of it to women and their children. When women get become, stuff, I guess they just keep it. But there's this, it's different. Yeah. And they and it, and it's again, it's an, and it's a matter of being attractive. Yeah. Like you're 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 expecting these young men to face a loss of their attractiveness to to women and be okay with it or, and or you frame any kind of negative reaction in terms of power and fear. No, maybe it's the same feeling that a woman gets facing the loss of her breasts. And I know this is a very strange analogy, but I'm trying to get that it from the conversation of, oh, oh, these men, they just, they, they want, they're losing their privilege. Well, they never really had it really. Right. They didn't yeah. have it. Okay. So, I mean, even this is the, is a great counter example to the whole, oh, men are just complaining about losing their privilege. Well, wouldn't that be the baby boomers then? Like they, they were the men who had pres presumably a little less to, uh, 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 they actually had something to lose and they lost it. Well, they're okay with that. 
It's the young men who grew up with never having it in the first place, who are slightly concerned of both not having the uh, or 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 playing on a field that's slanted against them, but also the fact that in order to be attractive to the opposite sex, they have to win, right? Those two joint pressures. They are the ones who are upset about it. Maybe let's move it out of the fear and power because feminists bring everything between men and women down to fear and power. Have you noticed that? Yeah, Everything they do. is fear and power. Yep, everything, everything is fear and power, yep. Yeah, these guys, it's not about fear and power. It's about the same suite of emotions or suit of emotions that women have facing a loss of something fundamental to their sense of self, their sense of femininity, their sense of attractiveness, their breasts to breast cancer. Yeah. Can you just just get into that headspace if you're a woman and understand how that must feel? And it's not yep. fear and power, it's more shame, disheartening, probably a sense of your mortality, a sense of what is the worth of it, a sense of uh, of embarrassment, humiliation, you know, self-consciousness, uh depression loss sadness concern like all of those emotions that for some reason feminists think that are 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 uh, you know like uh, even though there are no pink and blue brains men just can't access those emotions yeah <laughs> like, they're, because they're, of they're, socialization and toxic masculinity yeah yeah it, it, but but at the same time like the emotions are something so fundamental they don't start like there, there's something you start to develop at the very beginning of your life. Like it's not, there's no socialization that can prevent a man from feeling embarrassment or sadness or shame, which I, I, you know what? I'm sorry, feminists. I know men. I'm pretty sure they feel those things. I know you think they don't. You think everything is power and fear, but it's, it. from my own observations of men, I have walked among the gorillas in the mist. And I would say that they have a very, very, very deep and varied, very, very deep and varied mm. emotional life. Okay. Feminists want men's emotions to be like too black and white, fear and fear and power. Well, that's not the case, you know. And yeah. but I just wanted to point that out because that's that's one thing that really aggravates me about all of this. And I think that's what yeah. you're picking up on. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm getting at. Is that there's this assumption that men are, 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 are feeling upset because they're like losing something, Fear and like power. losing power, losing well, money. It's and it's like, well, uh, is that what you think that a, a job is? Like, is that all mm -hmm. you think it is? Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry, but it's like I, I think, I don't know. These people don't understand. Um, no, okay, I got to understand. No, they don't want to understand. Uh, let, let's, I got a super chat. I'm going to read it really quick from, uh, Richard Bier. He gives us five bucks and says, why not femboy scouts of America? I am speculating that the feminist lobby is intentionally trying to create conditions that are at least perceived as hazardous socially to women so they can have something to justify their advocacy and activism and lobby well, they always for more do. restrictive laws and policies. But yeah, this, it's never about the, th the thing is never about the thing. It's only about the revolution. Yeah, um, but also, like, verifiably, feminists have embraced things that make women less safe. Yes. In order to pr promote their ideology. Yes. So it, they want that, people in more hear, danger so they can say, look, you guys need more feminism. Whenever I hear feminists say, but we are the party that cares about... No, you're not. You're the party that cares about feminism. Like, And oh. the thing is, something, like, occurred to me today. I was just sort of puttering around, and I was like, women are trapped in feminism mm -hmm. and the gen z women are the ones playing this out they're trapped in feminism um with with i think eventually the gen z men will will probably have to pick up the pieces if they want to that's the other thing maybe well, maybe consider not if they them. want to but yeah mm -hmm. i have, I okay. have noticed yeah. that the zoomer women are there there's more of them like Kind of like crying out, like what, what? What? Why can't I just be a wife and mother? <laughs> it's yeah, like lady. you can. You're just gonna make enemies of the establishment. Um. Well, but they can't. Okay. I mean, just be a wife and mother. Well, you can. Mm -hmm. You the the economy 
for various reasons and very much as a as a down stream to feminist influence has has tanked well i, I don't mm -hmm. want to say that it's it's well you can live you can live within your means but it means giving things up yeah so if you want to be you a can, wife and you mother, can live in this economy you'll just have to you, live with less yeah and you'll have to maybe go out into a rural area to buy a house or something yep oh yeah, for okay. sure for sure okay anyway this is a new and unusual generational pattern. Normally, it tends to be the case that younger generations are consistently more comfortable with emerging social norms as they grow up with these as a natural part of their lives. Professor Bobby Duffy, director of the policy in King's College London, said, This points to a real risk of fractious division amongst this coming generation of young. Well, that's okay. That's true. This is the big thing about G Generation Z that I'm most worried about is the divide between male and female in terms of their beliefs and values is like further apart than any other generation. I wonder if there's anything or idea or set of values that has contributed to this. When I want the, the mind boggles. Yeah, When I see the graphs, like it's mm -hmm. not that the Gen Z, um, even in the UK, I don't think that the Gen Z is going like men are actually really going that far right. No, and they're I think not. They're, they're pretty no, much. They're not. It's that Gen they're pretty Z moderate. It's the girls are are falling off a cliff. Yes. And honestly, like at this point in time, do you really want to have a child with a woman who thinks that a child can decide on its gender? You know, when it's when it, before it's gone through puberty. Yeah. I mean, that would be terrifying. Well, that, yeah. Um, okay. So the rise, should I read the rise? The rise, this is a short article. Right? It seems, the yes, rise, it's short. Yeah, the rise of misogynist influence. Beware of the buzzwords, guys. Uh, at the same time as young men are turning away from feminism, misogynist men are rising in popularity done... online. What? Maybe we should have done bingo on this. On this article, uh, yeah. well, I mean, this is all stuff that, like, I mean, I haven't read this, but I already know what's in it. I already know, and it, it's. I want to know who else they're gonna mention, because they're saying misogynist men plural, so I already know one person. Gonna... Um, okay, misogynist men are rising in popularity online, according to Duffy. Men who are feeling sidelined are filling that void by tuning into influencers like Tate and having their views affirmed. Despite facing charges in Romania, which he denies, of human trafficking, rape, and forming a criminal Wait, criminal rape? gang to sexually exploit women, Tate still has a loyal legion of fans with 8.7 million followers on the social media platform X alone. His popular Instagram and Facebook accounts were taken down, and while he he been banned, what? <laughs> Proofread. <laughs> he been banned from ever having a TikTok account. Content posted under the hashtag Andrew Tate has racked up billions of views. I mean, don't go on TikTok. In one video Wait. that led him... What? Rape? He's been... Rape? He's, he's supposedly... Uh, yeah. okay. Um, well, I, you know... The thing is, is, does this, is this, is, has it changed? Because, again, the, one of the women that he was doing business with, the, you know, the, the, the heavy, uh, she got more charges. We're supposed changed? to, no, we're supposed to believe... What these people say, 100%. Mm. Smoke cigars, okay, well, he drives a Bugatti, Bug Bugatti or whatever. It's obviously the bad guy. So, don't ask questions. Just consume product and get excited for next product. Um. Okay. Anyway. Okay. In one video that led Andrew Tate. Okay, I'm making an executive decision. No okay. more Andrew Tate. Like this is getting really annoying. They basically just use him like Gamergate now. Yeah, that's okay. that's right. Yes. Yes, okay, let's, let's they've been doing that for years. Fine. I've been saying this. I've been saying this forever because every time his name comes up, there are people in the comments like, oh, and it's like, you don't understand. Like, this isn't about the guy. This is just using the guy. It could be anybody. It could be anybody. It could be any group. Like you said, Gamergate, fucking Deplorables, January 6th, whatever you want to say, just throw the Paul Elam, whatever, you know, Bash a Violent Bitch Month. 
It doesn't matter. These people are not interested in having a real conversation. They are interested in using people as political weapons against us because they don't want the conversation to take place. That's it. So you can debunk all day and it doesn't fucking matter, okay? Um, they're gonna do I'm it with at. Pearl too. They're gonna do it with Pearl Here's too. Where I'm at. I don't give yeah. a fuck about Andrew Tate. He has nothing to offer. Let us move. No, I the... I agree. He's basically he's pretty much just a blue pill guy, honestly. Like there's, there's nothing there, but name. they but they find it useful because yeah, he looks like a cartoon character to them. Yes. Another name that resonated with over a third of young men in the study is best selling author and influencer and Canadian academic. Yeah. Guess who they're gonna mention next, Brian? Oh, uh, let's see. Hold on. Uh, down, okay. Down, down, down. Oh, since then the British American kickboxer turned influencer. Okay, no, right. No, no, no. Oh, oh, and Tate's not the only one. Only one of an many anti-feminist podcasts. Oh, we're talking about Peterson, right? Another yeah. name that's resonated with because P- Jordan Peterson. See, look, you're gonna say Jordan Peterson, and Andrew, are nothing alike. Again, these people don't care. Do you guys get this yet? It doesn't matter. You can They're build the America. best. You can build a fucking argument made out of adamantium, and it wouldn't matter. That like the decision is made. Jordan Peterson equals all the bad people. Jordan Peterson, fucking you know, uh, Andrew Tate, Donald Trump. It doesn't matter. They're all bad. It oh doesn't matter. So let me and and you are bad for liking them, or even like not wanting them dead i mean like you don't even have to like them you could just be like well you know i don't think they should be executed and they'll be like oh you're a oh, oh, oh deplorable this is the way it works it's it's like i just i just don't see the point in nuance where people don't want it like where it makes sense where you can say well jordan peterson's probably how many people do you think jordan peterson has prevented from offing themselves how many people do you think just but just on his talks just like, sure you know, with his here. books, just making appear. These people don't want those people to be alive. They want them dead. They don't care. That should make know. you angry. You should see these people as animals because they are okay with men offing themselves because they don't like that they, they, that they watch Jordan Peterson or listen to Joe Rogan or heaven forbid, go to an Andrew Tate thing. Like heaven forbid. This is what I'm saying. Like the stakes are too high for us to be concerned with who they are making into the bad guy. They're just too high. You, I would, at the very least, I would ask that you ignore it and just be like, look, these, these people, for whatever reason, they have probably saved lives. I don't care if you don't like it, but that's true. Okay. So let's put it this way. All right. These individuals see that young men are dying they see it that their young men are killing themselves and they choose to continue to focus on how young men are a burden to others Mm -hmm. this is monstrous absolutely monstrous and the fact that they are looking at they're they're lumping people who actually care like jordan peterson and they're saying they are the enemy it's like Cthulhu. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, no, you, th- th- they are so much in the wrong. They can't even, they aren't even in a position to point to anyone as the bad exactly. guy. Yeah. I mean, when Ke- Kevin Samuels died, right? And he was like this, you know, black guy, PUA guy, talked to women. He was honest with them. He offended a lot of them. And then he died, and there were women celebrating his death. Like there, because they, th- th- this is what I'm talking about. Like, this is absolutely monstrous. Absolutely monstrous. I'm sorry, there is no comparison. There's no comparison. Some guy like doesn't wear a shirt and smokes cigars and talks shit. That is nothing like someone who celebrates another man's unfortunate demise. It is nothing like also, that. Okay, and here's the other thing. If Tate has done these things. Well, then we, we have a system in place for that. Yes. So we'll just see what happens. We see what happens. He's going to be punished. There you go. The end. Shouldn't have pissed off the Romanian mob. There you go. The end. It's it's dealt with. But these individuals who continue to perpetuate a system that leads to dead men, 
Mm-hmm. They work with impunity, with nobody saying, "Hey, wait a well, second." They, yeah, Who are they, you? Who they, yeah, are there's you? no, there are no consequences. Point fingers. Who they get paid for fingers? this. Okay, let's keep going. All right. Anyway, um, <sighs> so is, Peterson, yeah. uh, another name they resonate with over thirty young men is the study and the best-selling author, influencer, Canadian academic Jordan Peterson, who speaks up for demoralized young men. And says Tate offers forthright aggression as an alternative to crippling defeat. Meanwhile, well, yeah, because like you're not you're not helping men at all. That's what like the only reason why they go to people like that is because you're shitting on them all the time. So if you don't want that, don't like, shit on them. Not even many boys. Like how many boys prefer Jordan it's Peterson? Like, yeah, like, well, seriously. probably they won't they won't give us the data, but it's probably a lot higher. Yeah. So, so. like this is this is a this is a, a fart in the wind. Like, mm-hmm. and, and they keep making this guy relevant. Anyway, yep. let's keep going. Meanwhile, the female influencer Pearl Davis has amassed nearly 2 million followers on YouTube, where she often collaborates with Tate on videos. Not really. She hasn't done that. Has argued that women should not vote, that men should be able to hit women back. Well, yeah, if they're being attacked, but I, I don't think they should because they'll go to jail. So it's probably not a good idea, even though if it makes perfect sense, but has argued that women should not vote, that men should be able to hit back, and has detailed the problem with diversity hires. Uh, what does this mean for the future of women at work? Previous research has suggested that Gen Z are most likely to see increased diversity as a good thing, and that they take a stand against outdated workplace practices like sexism. Yeah, because that was a practice. <laughs> did you practice any sexism today, Carl? Yes, I did, John. <laughs> I slapped the secretary on the behind. I told her to get me a coffee and a bagel. Um, okay, oh, whatever. Good. Oh, God, here comes the... So young businesswomen pinning their hopes on Gen Z to help Why make the workforce... They pin? Pinning their yeah. hopes, yeah. Um, to make the workforce more equitable for them and speed up the dial on gender parity, only seven of the UK's top 100 firms are led by women. Oh, my CEOs, my firms, my leadership... Maybe be crushed by women, the new data. How many women trash collectors? There's just one. What is the proportion to female trash collectors to female CEOs in the UK? If it's anything like the US, there are 20 times more female CEOs than female trash collectors. Like there's, they're 20 t- proportionately 20 times more. Yeah. So I'm sorry, that doesn't speak of discrimination in the higher echelons. It speaks of it, it, and and nobody like these people don't care. They no. don't care what that means, probably because they don't even understand it. What it means is that the proportion of male CEOs, for example, to male trash workers, is something like one male CEO for a thousand male trash workers. And I'm, I'm using oh, I bet it's way more than that. I bet it's, yeah, it probably like, is. But I'm using trash worker as yeah, like yeah. a it's synonymous with any shitty job. Okay. The proportion of female CEOs to female trash workers is something like one to 10, right? One to 10. And that's the proportion we should be looking at to determine who is discriminated against. The ratio of the people on the highest jobs to the lowest jobs. And the men are pre- are overwhelmingly in the lowest jobs. And oh, yeah. in fact, when you look or, at that, Or have no jobs. <laughs> you look at it that way, men are overwhelmingly discriminated in in the workforce, yep. and you yep. it, it, you just have to realize that you cannot squeeze blood from a stone. Of all the women who are willing to work, more of them end up as a CEO than a trash collector. Of all the men who are willing to work, more of them end up as a trash collector than a CEO. Do you see now? We mm-hmm. don't have a system of gender parity that favors men at all. We have one that favors women. We got forces getting women up to the top and men to the bottom. What the hell are you talking about? Mm -hmm. So young business women who are victims, because that's the big thing here. This is the overwhelming thing that always seems to have to happen. Women need to be presented as victims and men need to be presented as villains. Notice that? Mm Mm-hmm. Once again, because those are the real gender roles. All right, let's keep going. All right. 
I got a super chat from Iggy Thunders who gives us five dollars and says, Allison, it's great that you're into black comedy. Me? Well, I do own a colored TV. <laughs> yeah. Oh it's good lord. Them. And then I got a super chow from Richard Bier, gives us five bucks and says, Child choosing their own gender is just as likely as a cat choosing to be vegan. Who is really making the choices? And the one who became a reality TV show star for the process uh, actually exhausted the lifetime medical insurance coverage for the entire family. Jazz Jennings? Yeah, but her mom got to be famous. That I think that's really what it was about. Um, and I and I, I honestly weep for her. I mean, Jazz Jennings. Um, all right, but anyway, let's continue with the article. Uh... So young business women pinning their hopes we on Gen that. Z. Oh no, I read that. So we how can workplaces more. become more inclusive when the next wave of men coming into them have less progressive views than their predecessors? While it may be easy to say this as a as a phase that will pass, the unusual generational pattern can be seen beyond Britain. Half of young men in America also believe they face some kind of discrimination, and less than half identify as feminists, according to analysis by Daniel Cox, the director of the Survey Center on American Life. Well, I if I I wish to God that that were actually precise, but I doubt that it is. Um, meanwhile, only half support the Me Too movement compared Good to nearly Lord. three quarters of women. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> men think for themselves and women don't. <laughs> film at 11. Uh, but of course, I'm sure that there are plenty of women that don't agree, but they're also terrified to say so. So they're just going to be like, yeah, Me Too's good. Similarly, Gallup's data shows when me then young men around the world are becoming increasingly conservative while women are becoming more progressive. Okay, young wait, men today, wait, wait, then yeah, young yeah. men around the world? Okay, first of all, only South Korea is really showing this. Boy, South Korea is yeah. going to have fun in the next decade. But for the, for the rest of the world, the UK and the US, young men are staying relatively centrist while young women are just doing backflip over the cliff of progressivism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just... Like they're just uh, although I, I I think that one thing they're leaving out is this is simply men are just like not letting go of their masculinity because I mean mm -hmm. I think that's all it is they want they want to be men still and the women are trying to drag them and say you should come over here and the men are like no and some of them you know like I that's what I think this the, the divide Can you like, imagine what, the divide as defined by feminists is as you said, Allison, is the victims and then there's the, the oppressors. But the Did divide in terms of how it's actually shaping out is simply the masculine and the feminine. Being like you... and the and the masculine is like like it's like pushing and struggling and you know trying its hardest to stay basically what it is. And I think South Korea is doing the best at it, and I'm and I'm here for it. Um but I think that's all it is. I think it's just the masculine and the feminine being like, you know, um, expressing themselves and the and women are just like you said doing backflips <laughs> well could so. you imagine having your gender identity and the fact that you identify with your sex being a point of political contention yeah well it but is that's what this is the fact men that is identify is. as men yep. is a point of political contention being a man and is a point of a political contention it is like, and like we've just... gotten to the point We've gotten to the point where it's so bad that it is the counter proposition to the, the overarching thesis. It is mm -hmm. the antithesis to the thesis of society. That's, that's mm -hmm. astounding to me. And astounding to me that we could have articles like this. That, yep. <laughs> good Lord. And they don't even well, realize that... they're doing it. Like, I, or maybe they mm -hmm. do. Maybe they realize that they're presenting this very, very stiltified version of gender roles. Men are villains, women are victims, and that young men are reacting to that because they're tired of being vilified for something they had nothing to do with. This well, that's something that right no one there. has anything to do with. And that never really even happened. Like, that's the yeah. funny thing. You think they're pissed now that, you know, they're like, I didn't have anything to do with this. This is previous generations. You think they're pissed? What about when they find out? Yeah, it was never true. Yeah, well, dude, they're gonna their heads are gonna explode. Like it's gonna be like scanners. Uh, I mean, because the, that the 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 amount of ego death that would have to happen for people to be like, "Holy shit, I was wrong," 
and like the older they get the harder this gets but but it's true i mean like we're gonna find out one way or another there's gonna be like i said there's gonna be a lot of pain uh it's just it is what it is i, I hope that people are ready for when for this because it's true and i'm glad that men are, are fighting because i think they get the sense that their identity is under attack because that's what it is that's why why do you think there are so many articles saying hey are you into women you might be like a special kind of sexuality that's heterosexual but not heterosexual like what what like well oh, have you ever considered wearing high heels like they do push this on girls but it's not the same because because when girls express masculinity it's positive when men express well, it's masculinity not... it's negative it's oppressive well it's it's not like uh well, it's just that they don't want to, they don't want the, oh, you know what? This is, this isn't a digression. Let's finish this. Article yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's get to the article. article. We're, yeah, okay. Um, all right. Young men, today. young men today are entering the workplace at a time when women are holding senior positions for the first time in some companies history. And it could be the reason why what Gen the? Z are feeling sidelined and in turn threatened by feminism. No, this is not true. Women have been holding senior positions They've been a majority in, uh, like, for example, middle management for decades now. And yeah. they've been holding senior positions for longer than for that. For generations, really. For generations. And they've, and they've always been important. important. Like, they've always worked. They've always owned property. But All of this love, is bullshit. Though, this, though you love how this is, like, this little sleight of hand that they do? Uh, yeah. Men are finally feeling discriminated against, and, and that's, that's about threat. So it's about fear and power. Mm-hmm. Or maybe Gen Z are seeing uh, women holding senior positions and saying, well, what's the point of, of, of accusing us of oppressing women then at this point? Yep. Like, the, here's the thing. Like, feminists, you believe that men oppress women. But as you succeed, it becomes more and more apparent that that's not the case. And they don't believe it anymore. Or they're believing yep. it less and less. Because yep. you're demonstrating that it isn't so. And yet you still want that narrative. I wonder why. You still want to keep hold of that narrative of being oppressed, even as you manage to create an upward pressure that's creating this 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 ratio for women up top. So of, of all the women who are participating in the workforce, they are far more likely to end up in a CEO position than in a trash collector position. Whereas mm -hmm. for men, they are far less likely to end up in a CEO position than a trash collector position. And you are presenting that to these young men as oppression of women. And they're saying, I, mm, I don't see that. Well, because it's true. And now you're saying that, oh no, they're just, they're just threatened by strong, independent women. Really? Yep. I don't think any man is threatened by a strong, independent woman who says, I actually feel like I need a man in my life and I am fine if I'm going to, I'm going to pay for him to stay home and take care of the kids and fix yep. the car. Yeah. And there's no, I don't think there's many men who, uh, unless you're, you're like going into deepest, darkest grease, like, uh, who, who <laughs> actually would have a problem with that. They may not yeah. be that man. They may not want to be that man, but I don't think they'd have necessarily have a problem with that. You know who does have a problem with that? Likely her friends. Yep. You know why they have a problem with that? Because if one woman actually values a man for his companionship, this is the real slut shaming. If one woman values a man for his companionship, then they have to look at the fact that they don't and realize that they are shallow, selfish, materialist harpies. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, young men today are entering the workplace at a time when women are holding senior positions for the first time in some company's history. And it could be the reason why Gen Z men are feeling sidelined and in turn threatened by feminism. In her 1991 book, Backlash, The Undeclared War Against American Women, the feminist author Susan Faludi argued that a backlash against women's rights was a recurring phenomenon that returns every time women begin to make some headway towards equality. That's the end of the article. That weird, doesn't weird, make sense. Wait, is it the end of the article? Yeah, yeah that's it's the end of the article, but it doesn't, doesn't freaking make sense in the context of it's the a, It's a article. weird way to end it, but they're basically saying women are getting stuff done now and men are mad. And you know what actually that means? Let me interpret it. When men, women make progress, people question the narrative of their oppression. And let me tell you something. Yeah, for sure. The honest to God truth is that on a fundamental level, 
If feminism's premise is correct, its methods are ineffectual. We see that feminism's methods are effectual. In, in other words, they have affected the outcomes that they want. Therefore, feminism's premise is wrong. It is wrong. And what I mean by that is the feminist premise is that men have oppressed women throughout all of time. There is no time in which men have not oppressed women. Yeah. Except for maybe some mythological matriarchy in the way distant past, which actually has been proven not to be true. Hunter-gatherer societies are often more patriarchal. Okay, so mm -hmm. men have yeah. oppressed women throughout all of human history. And somehow in the 70s, women or, or even the 1800s somewhere, women were like, stop doing that. And men said, okay. So somehow they invented men caring about women. No. If an entire, if, if thousands of generations of men being in relationships, being raised by women didn't shift oppression, a bunch of women with placards isn't going to do fuck or all to shift it. So if feminism's premise is correct, their methods would be ineffectual, and yet they weren't. It did shift it. And mm -hmm. can you imagine all women had to do was march? Well, actually, they did march multiple times throughout human history. In every amp almost every empire that I've studied, every civilization I've studied, there have been periods of times where women took to the streets and changed political opinions. Period. So this is not new. Feminism is not new. Marching in the streets to get what you want is not new to women. Right? Feminism's premise that women were oppressed. Women could, uh, couldn't, for some reason, they never thought to ask for what they wanted from men. And then yeah. men suddenly just started to give it to them. No, it's, it's bullshit. And again, if feminist premises were correct, if men really oppressed women, then feminism's methods would have been ineffectual. Simply asking for them to change would have been ineffectual. And this is not the same as a racial divide because generally white people are not raised by black people. And where they were, you do actually see the genesis of sympathy. But even more... That whole, that whole conversation appealed to a greater religious narrative about the nature of freedom and the human soul. Most abolitionist efforts were Christian in nature. Yep. All right? So that's a red herring. What we're talking about is two groups of people with the most intimate relationship on the planet. And if men, women couldn't get men to care about them by raising them, when we could get an animal that ate us, wolves, that would hunt and eat us. We could turn that animal into one that lives to please us. And yet in- Like Jojo. Yeah, we could do that. And yet in multiple, um, like so much more time, women couldn't turn men, couldn't raise them to care about them. We could raise a, a wolf to care about us and become a dog, but women couldn't raise men who are, uh, uh, you know, for some reason, Mother Nature put men there. Usually when Mother Nature does something like that, it's for the survival of the species, which means men must have some benefit for women. But no, women couldn't raise men to care about women in all of human history. But feminism finally figured out the one thing that would get men to actually care about their issues. Cardboard signs. Yep. You know, being really strident. Asking, have you, have you considered, ladies, have you asked, considered asking more bitchily? You know, being more of a bitch about it. Yeah, bullshit. Okay. All right, I'm, All right. I'm, gonna, I'm done with my screed. I got a, I got a super up. chow. It doesn't have any message. Just a message from um, Albatross, and he gives us $5. Thank you, Albatross. I don't know if you meant to say something else. If you did, you can just type it in the chat and tag Badger Live Streams, and I'll see. Um, so that's the article. Do you guys you want to look at this video? Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Bingo. All right, I'm going to put it on it's the screen. It's time for the game. Yeah, let's play some bingo. Let's, let's see how far we get. 
Okay, but I can't um, see the bingo card. Yeah, I can't show the bingo card and this at the same time, but I sent them to you. Oh, so oh, they're yeah, in the oh. discords. You could look at them in right. there. Okay. Then when yes. you see something, um, not okay, not on this guy. Playing. This guy's the host. Don't don't react to him. What was that? Okay. So okay, I get to play too. All right. Yeah. yeah well, I guess you're gonna be driving the bingo card, and I will, like, fill really? in the things when. Yeah, because well, I'll fill it in on here because I have the whiteboard thing. Yeah, but so anyway. how how do you mean by me driving the bingo card? I want what I'm saying that I'm is is that you will look at the bingo card and when so when they go to a person and they give their they start talking, just listen to what they're saying. And when you oh, hear okay. something you know you think is on the card, then just reference okay, the I card. Will, I will, and then yeah. I will show the card on the screen and I'll fill in the little thing. All right. Okay, All right, here we go. Got it. Yes. Yeah. So a new poll has revealed that Gen Z or Gen Z, I don't know how I'm supposed to say it, and British boys and men are more likely to believe that feminism has done more harm than good when compared with older respondents. So the poll... So yeah, it's Gen Z, don't say Z. I don't get that. Sorry, Canadians and British. All right, mm -hmm. let's, let's continue. <laughs> Polling also found that a quarter of UK males aged 16 to 29 believe it's harder to be a man than a woman with one in five looking favorably upon controversial influencer Andrew Tate. 37% oh, of them Lord. also agree just... that the phrase toxic masculinity is unhelpful. So, with Gen 37 Z boys... 37% only? Yeah, 37%. Only 37? Only 37? Who the heck? It should be a lot higher, yeah, I know. But you know what? The thing is, is that, like, the Gen Z has, like, the boys and girls have both gone through public education, and and the girls were just came out more brainwashed than the boys and some of the boys were like i don't know this doesn't sound right so there you go mm. um i think that it should be more that are questioning that but yeah there you go he's increasingly holding this view has feminism done more harm than good let me know your thoughts email me gbviews at gbnews.com tweet me at gbnews and make sure you take part in our poll but i'll bring you those results shortly going head to head on this tonight our author and commentator anna may mangan and youtuber and social media influencer pearl davis both of you thank you very much pearl i'll start with you has feminism done more harm than good especially when it i'm just pausing for the banana but let's okay so get the red pill because I think Pearl's going to talk first. So get the red pill bingo card out. Okay. It comes to these Gen Z boys. Um, yes, yes, it has. I, feminism really has turned into a bunch of crybaby women that want to complain that we're not given equal opportunity when really women are given more opportunity than men. Um, and so, yeah, I would say feminism is a hate group and it's a bunch of crybaby women. Oh, I don't think that's on there. I, I no. could I well there's misandry. I mean you could you could call you could play the we could put misandry. No, let's what keep it think? let's keep it strict to the strict to the So if they if they use the word misandry we fill it in? Yep. Okay. All right, let's hear the other woman have. Uh, Anna, would you like to come back to that? Oh, Cry shit. baby women feminism apparently. What? No, oh keep going, keep going. Okay. I'm good. I'm I just make sure you, you hit the banana. No, no, oh. it's fine. I'll go back a little. Okay, bit. I think I think that qualifies a right lad with us today. A right so, lad. So in this this patriarchy, we use we use lad as a, as a prerogative, eh? Pejorative, okay, no, yeah. Pejorative. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's okay. All right, let's keep. Thank All you right, for mansplaining, dictionary explaining. So we've got a right lad with us tonight, with Pearl, in her opinions, haven't we? How could it possibly do harm? Pearl wouldn't do... I hope you vote. I assume you do. I hope you're not chained to the kitchen sink at home. Um, <laughs> okay, wait. Not... That's got to be on there, right? No, it's not. Wait. Oh, my God. You, there's you get know? in the kitchen. Get in the kitchen, um, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's, that is probably... Is that... Okay, okay. We're going we're gonna to mark... That, yeah. Get in I the kitchen... That... That's that one. was a lot of various ways of get back in. The yeah, there are a few ways to say that. Chain to the kitchen. I, I probably could have put chain to the stove down. Um, mm. Of course, of course, she would say that. Oh, I got to leave this. Uh, oh, shit. The, the whiteboard stays the same. I mark uh -oh. it. No, it's OK. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. all right. I'm not sure if you've got a job, so I don't know very much about you, but uh, you're pro if there's a bloke doing the same thing as you, you're probably earning less than him. So, of course, feminism is something that it got wage to the vote gap. in the first place. Oh, the wage gap? Oh, right, yeah. of course. 
Yes. Uh, okay, so wage gap, that's two. Not making a thing across, though. No. Nope. Not, not, not doing that. Um, Keep going. Wait, okay. wait, 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 wait. Patriarch. Patriarchy? No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he, she says that. Keep, let's keep going. Okay, let's keep going. Still doing a power of good. It's just whingy men. And actually, I, I changed that. They're lads. They're not men who are probably devotees of Andrew Tate who extol this. And it's it's really, it's pathetic. And it's a shame that it's their sure, intellects are because been... they're... What? Um... Okay, go back a bit. Like, uh, you should put put Andrew Tate in feminist bingo now. Ah, uh, you know, I was trying not to do that, but oh, yeah, okay. yeah you, I, you I guess. Get away from it. Okay, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Um, go back a bit, cause she she really just gatling guns these insults because that's all she does. Really she have. Does. Um, go back a bit. All right. I, I did go back a little. I'm going to go back more here. I'm not sure if you've got a job. So I don't know very much about you. But uh, you're pro if there's a bloke doing the same thing as you, you're probably earning less than him. So, of course, feminism uh -huh. is something that it got us the vote the in the first place. And yeah, the, the, the We got the wage gap. gap. So of it got us something. It's still doing a power of good. It's just whingy men. And actually, I, I changed that. They're lads. They're not men who are... So they're not men. They're just They're just boys. Okay, so that was a that was an insult to any men that like, I guess you know feel. You really need uh you need a specific British feminist bingo card. <laughs> yeah, I guess I was is, just sort of throwing feminist like that the, the the appeal to laddishness. Yeah, like anything to do with lad, it should have been on here. Um, yeah, okay, that would have been, but that would have filled the whole thing really quick. Yeah, probably. Yeah. All right. Probably devotees of Andrew Tate who extol this, and it's it's really it's pathetic, and it's a shame that their intellects aren't as big as their mouths. What? Uh, oh, wait, is that a small pee pee joke? No, is she making a small pee pee joke? It's the, no, they say their intellect isn't as big as their mouths. Well, even though these guys are not talking at all, they're all completely silent. They don't even talk about this stuff. Like Andrew yeah. Tate talks about it. Um, some like, and I, I don't like again. I think he talks about it in the most not very useful way, but um, you know, but the the people the you know what I'm not even going to talk about that. The the young men who have this problem aren't talking about it. No, do you, do you hear them? Well, it's almost like if they do, women like this come after them. Yeah. Fucking okay. Old bulldogs. Um, All right. Okay. okay. I think that this does qualify it as a misandry. Misandry doesn't real. So. Oh yeah, mi okay. Uh, do oh, misery doesn't real. Uh, oh, that's okay. Not quite, not quite a filling the thing yet. Um, okay. but yeah, we have great culture, toxic masculinity, mansplaining, uh, must CEOs. That's not that's not there. So all right, yeah. let's uh, let's listen to more. Okay. Well. What has feminism accomplished in the last hundred years? Go and look it up, Pearl. I mean, that's such an ignorant oh, no, question. Wait, wait. Oh, I should have, you know what I should have put on here is Google it. Because that's like a big feminist. You you need to educate yourself. Should have been on the list. <laughs> yeah, we need, like, next time we do this, we need yeah. to have, like, a, a randomizer feminist bingo. Yeah. And then yeah. everybody needs to play this game. Not just us. All of you guys need to play I'd like that. I, I have to figure out how to do it. But, yeah, I would like that. Okay. Okay. Look, well, no, 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 look, Anna, what, what does Anna, achieve for you are women in general? Here, right? so can you that? Is let's start with a vote. Let's start with educational opportunities. But oh, okay. Not enough. I mean, I would answer not enough. Oh, you didn't have the vote in here. Uh, not for feminists because they take that as a given. Yeah, but I do have I do have it in the red pill because I figured like Pearl might say repeal the nineteenth. Um, but. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, to be honest, I think that the fun in this is mostly the feminism bingo. So yeah, just and they always bring up the freaking vote. Yeah, but they you know they, they act like honestly, they like they saved women's lives with that one. Honestly, the 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 thing is that no, the thing is that these are the phrases that we have, um, and it, any bingo card we wouldn't get all the phrases. So yeah, we just have to stick with the ones that we got here. But yeah, the vote needs to be in there. Yeah, I should I should uh, have added that. Yeah, um, but the thing is, you know what, guys? Um, tell us what you would add to the feminist bingo card so we can enrich this activity. 
and you can maybe put it in the comments. You can send that to badger at feedthebadger.com. It's badger at feedthebadger.com. Just send, mm -hmm. tell us what else we should put in the bingo card. Um, I think that's okay for this one because, you know, like, whenever you have a bingo card, you're not going to have everything. It's just like there's so many good ones that are just flying past. Yeah. Ah, okay, just, let's uh, keep going. And this. Uh, I'll just mark this one. And you did. Uh, Wage gap. Doesn't real. Just m making a note of it. Uh, wage gap. Yeah, and there was like one more. Get in the kitchen. Got got that one. Uh, mansplaining. No. Dodgy. No. Pick me. Was that well? Did she didn't call her. A no, pick not me, yet. But... No, no. I, it, okay. I don't think you're going to get that from a British feminist. Yeah. But we maybe, maybe we, she may surprise us. Let's keep going. Women has an STD. One out of three women has had an abortion. 40% of children are born into single parent homes. Uh, and women didn't have the right to abortion until they fought hard for it. So that's, uh, that, you can strike that one off your list. Women's right to choose. Oh yeah, that's right. Women's right to choose. Okay. Uh, that's right here. Um, oh, and also probably we should also get just about equality. I just think. about equality, yeah, of course. Maybe, common sense. Maybe. Common sense has stuff. She, has she done an appeal to common sense? No, I mean, no, let's oh. keep that one blank. Let's keep that one blank. Okay. Okay, keep going. Well, women, women, but why is that a good thing? Why is that a good thing that now we're aborting our children? We have STDs. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Who would you like to be in charge of your body, Pearl? Yourself or a man or some man, some unnamed man, some old politician? What What are you talking about? <laughs> what? Say that again. Sorry, broke up. You talked about abortion. I mean, isn't abortion a woman's this right? A and they had to fight hard for that. Do you oh, women's right to choose. We did that one, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, this okay, is the okay. women's right to choose a part of the discussion. Yeah. Get that away no, from I, them? It's not a woman's right. No, I, I don't think women have the right to kill their children. No. Okay. Well, well, I don't know where you are, what cage you're locked up in, but you're you're like, and what century no, you're living okay, in. Okay, okay, I think. That <laughs> what cage are you living in? Oh. Honestly, I think that qualifies. That should be the same spirit as pick me, but it, yeah. it's not. I mean, she's I? throwing out some. She's throwing out some ripe ones here. Yeah. Let's keep. Well, going. she's English, so she's doing it in a new way. A new. Uh, well, not new to to uh, any other Brits that might be watching. They probably all heard this. Before. Yeah, she's real. I mean, is this like a real person? Is this like that woman that used to come on like Fox sometimes and be the progressive that would just make like the insane like counter argument? Is she fake? Is this a real person? Um. Okay. So. Uh, should I do the pick me or no? No, let's let's keep it legit. All right. All okay, right. we'll keep try going. and keep it. Really I'll tell you what else is disingenuous. Women have never been locked up in a cage. You know, the first female property <laughs> owner was in the 1600s. It was in oh, the 1600s. Earlier than that, Women have always girl? been able to work if they wanted. I think she means maybe she means in the states, but that woman was black too. On top of that, by the way, in the 1600s. Um. Too. There's always yeah, a political the movement. Yeah, go ahead. There have been women property owners since there was property. Yes. Which itself, the concept of property requires the ability to enforce its ownership, which itself requires people who are willing to protect their property and the property of others. Yep. See, property rights had to evolve. And property rights are the basis for a lot of our other concept of other rights. So it's funny when I listen to to communists talk about rights, without talking about mm -hmm. the like f property rights were the most fundamental rights, and they from property rights came everything else. All right, let's let's keep going. All right, all right. Movements that women have been allowed to be a part of this idea that women were somehow oppressed in the past and just had no rights. It's not true. The reason uh, that women didn't vote was uh, because they could. I can't be believe I can't believe what I'm hearing. Women are okay. All right. I think there's a couple so... that. What? I think there's a couple you. I think there's a couple you can. Uh, do you want me to do the other? Oh, one red too? pill ones. Go ahead. Yeah. Let's hear okay. it. Okay. All right. Let's let's meet. Let me get the red pill. I don't want to do the trad con. I don't think that's going to come into play with this one. No, there's um, a guy that comes on later that's got. I think he has a couple of crack uh, on tapes. Okay, all right, he might not fill the bingo card, though. Okay. Uh, women should be repealed a ninth 
Uh, men do all the jam- boys, uh, women have never been oppressed. There you go. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's right. That is one. Mm-hmm. And They're I would impressed. also say that men die in war too because of the draft. Yep, men die in war. Okay. 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 Let's go. Uh, all right. Let's get back to this. So they have less opportunity to buy a property yeah, on their own. The FTSE 100. There are very few women at the top. There are very oh, few my women CEOs. in the house. Oh, my CEOs. Yes. Yes. My CEOs. Um. Where is that one? Is that the the bottom corner? Bottom feminist bingo, yeah. Yeah, there we go, right there. Oh okay. man, like oh, she only needs like two, three there. It's it's close. She could get it. She probably will. Yep. The commons. Uh, there are enough women. Fifty-one percent of the population, and we should be equally represented. And women like you. Well, I don't even think. You're oh, oh, oh! Just sure. about equality. Would you? Uh, would you yep. Say? Just about equality. Just there about we equality. go. Um, let me. See. Okay, yeah, I already, I already got that one. What you are, if you use your view of how we should be living in 2024. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna I'm actually quite shocked by you. Okay, well, well, but then maybe well, it's just clickbait. Right. I mean, is that, is that your job? Oh, all right, Pearl, come, come back me. to that. And then I we think will that, I did, okay. Guys, oh, do you think that me? qualifies as pick me? I think that... Does that qualify as a pick me yeah. thing? Yeah. Let's, let, let's throw see. it to the chat. Tell us if that qualifies as pick me. All right, I'm going to wait and see if they say anything. So what was it that she said? Just a paraphrase. Uh, she said, "Okay, uh, God, it's really Should difficult go to paraphrase her because she's like, she's like a pigeon strutting across a board and just kicking." <laughs> They're saying yes, but let's let's go back a teeny bit and let's you, go back. How we should be living in twenty twenty four? I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm quite shocked by you, okay, well, but well, then well, maybe it's well, just clickbait. Well, I mean, is that is that your job? Just oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's well, a, that's I, pick me. All right. Yeah, I think that's pick me. I okay, think that's pretty we're gonna, close. We're going to put that. So she just needs to call someone a misogynist and then she wins. Or mm. she has to mention uh, grape culture and she mm. wins. Or she has to make fun of the size of, of uh, somebody's manhood. So if she does any of those things, she wins. Um, I feel like this is like inevitable. <laughs> All right, let's let's keep going. Let's- all, all right, Pearl, come, come back to that, and then we will actually bring in a, a Gen Z man for, for his view on all of this as well. Go, go on, Pearl, come back to that. Men, men do 80%, 88% of the food supply, 93% of the power grid, 95% of men transportation, do all the 90% jobs. of communications, oh, 78% of material production, 80% of software. Do you know what women lead in? What what jobs? School teachers, secretaries, and child care workers. Basically what they would have done at the home. <laughs> don't don't, don't forget OnlyFans model. Uh, okay, so... So how many of these do I fill out? Men do all the dangerous jobs. I just want to point something out. Women do all the jobs that they would have done at home. Yeah, they do. Including being sexy. Except yep. now they do it in such a way that we aren't actually producing families or a future. Okay, men do all the dangerous jobs. Women, right. uh, men keep the country running. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's all I see. But there was yeah, two I that... think so. Was she like... She's she's Sorry. coming up the rear there. She's coming up the rear. She is. She might pull it off. I don't know why I got this big fat line. I can't do anything about it right now. I clear the whole board. But, but, but this burn them the fake then. They're job. useless. What about having children, child rearing, caring responsibilities? Do you not? Yeah, care but that's that what's that important. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Why are you appealing to what women did before to explain? why women should be in the work place place and not doing that thing it's like uh well uh, okay so how did this how honestly this, this these conversations they devolve into nonsense so quickly so pearl is basically saying well men do this important thing this important thing this important thing and the work that women do in the workplace is not equivalent because men are basically running a society and this woman's responding with well what women raise children well not when they're in the workplace <laughs> Yep. Like, so how can you appeal to the thing that women don't do when they're in the workplace to justify that they're contributing as much to then justify them being in the workplace? Like, I mean, I, I personally don't have any authoritative authoritarian prescriptions about how people should arrange their lives, but I would appreciate some logical sense from this woman. Mm-hmm. 
I feel like I'm asking too much, though. Okay. <laughs> I think let's, you are, yeah. What sense? I, I wouldn't say that it is worth as much money as running the entire okay. infrastructure of society. All right. The market determines how much a job I'm is gonna worth. Get, I'm just going to get, 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 get you to put a pin back in that grenade. Like, All right, it well, stay where you are. Stay where you are, I'm just stay where you are brother. Okay. All right, okay. Stay. Straw man. <laughs> guys, guys, guys. The poor, this poor guy trying to control these women. <laughs> well, we live in a patriarchy, huh? Yeah, yeah, I know. Why didn't he just? Why didn't he just like fucking put his foot down and put these women in line? Oh, because he, he doesn't his... actually have that kind of power that they're claiming he has. He yeah. has to wait. Okay. Why didn't he put right. them in his thrall? Yeah. Why didn't he just use his thrall powers? I, I think. I guess. I guess it's not good over his like internet connection. So. I think that me Tarzan or me Jane, you Tarzan is a straw man. Incidentally, <laughs> oh yeah, I, I think it qualifies. And incidentally, wouldn't Jane have been like the one who had the education? You knew how to read. Jane, yeah. I don't know Jane. about the original story, but in the Disney one, she was the educated one. Yeah, I mean, it would have been in probably in the original story too, because she was coming from an actual civilization. But honestly, this woman probably only knows about the Disney version. He should have anyway. interrupted. Yeah, it's the thing, but he couldn't. What, what does she have a problem with that? Like the woman has all of the the you know the social know how and the education and the the knowledge of a world outside of the jungle, and the dude yeah. is just really really tough, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As God intended it. <laughs> Good lord! All right, let's let's. My point is that she's presenting this like the, the man is in charge and yet the woman has like has so many advantages is what I'm mm -hmm. getting at. Do you really get me, me Jane, you Tarzan? Does that really articulate to, uh, uh, I don't know, um, man in power and woman submissive? <laughs> Like that doesn't make sense to anyway. Okay, I'm I'm overanalyzing. Let's keep going. That's all right. Okay. Stay with the set. Good, good. Uh, I was just gonna bring in. <laughs> just gonna bring in a, a Gen Z man now because quiet. Please <laughs> tear me apart. <laughs> please, please. Let's ladies. Let's stop. It's often we talk about these issues, and we talk about you know uh, women's issues, and we get two blokes talking about it, and then you know it all looks a bit much, doesn't it? So and we've got writer and commentator Connor Tomlinson. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So if you get two dudes talking about women's issues, nobody appreciates. That's weird. I thought we lived in a patriarchy, huh? Weird. It's funny how weird. patriarchy didn't just use its power. To yeah, I, I thought that men could just talk about women's issues like without because that's what a patriarchy is. But this guy yeah. is like literally acknowledging the rea the reality, which is like, yeah, women actually do have power <laughs> in this society and always have. Yep. Okay, let's go. Good. I, I believe, Connor, you are classed as a Gen Z man, I think, right? Yeah, I was um, born in 98, so I'm uh, I'm like one of the Xennials. I, I went to school before phones, so I'm one of the more well-adjusted no, ones, I'd hope. Connor, I'll be really honest with you, mate. I don't really know what any millennials or Gen Z thing really means. But basically, young men are now thinking that feminism has gone too far uh, and, and that actually men have a worse time. It's harder to be a man than a woman. Where are you on this? Well, I'm not surprised that they find feminism so radioactively repugnant, because listening to anime in the last conversation, uh, I, I just started tuning out because I just saw the same platitudes that I hear from every institution that denigrates male accomplishment as some... Okay, okay, wait, dude, those weren't platitudes. <laughs> um, I, at least it's not as I understand the word, because I understand the word is, like, sort of vacuous but vaguely positive. That was... this was outright abuse. Yeah. Yeah, like, the platitudes... I think what he means uh, is... A remark... He means, I think, really like used up and tired talking points, like the same old buzzwords and talking points. Um, and I mean, considering she almost filled her bingo card, uh, yeah, that is what it. Yeah. Was. But I think that maybe platitude is the wrong word for it. Yeah, um, like platitude is um, a remark or statement, especially one with a moral content. I, I'm not sure that her statements had any moral content besides "I'm good, you're bad." Yeah. I mean, I guess that is moral content, but it seems like a very self-serving amount of moral content. Anyway, let's... Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. 
some sort of emissary of toxic patriarchy. Meanwhile, men are actively discriminated against with preferential hiring policies under the Equalities Act or Affirmative Action in the United States. They're discriminated against in family courts, leading to many men growing up without a father in certain communities is up to 70%. It's about nearly 50% of uh, children in the UK grow up between two households, often without their father present. It's not very good for young men either. And then on top of all that, when they are bottom of the achievement pile for colleges, picked last for various jobs because of preferential hiring again, they're told that even if they stick their head above the parapet and complain, okay, well, they're just being misogynistic. So it's not... Okay, I just okay. want to make sure we don't run afoul. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Okay. I don't really see... Um... Yeah, this is all like red pill talking points. No, it is. He's, he's actually saying yeah, some. I mean, they're basically pill. like they're like 101, like red pill 101 talking points. I would but, say yeah. boys are treated like girls in schools. Good one. Male suicide, I think he got. Uh, yes. Well, no, he didn't say the suicide, but he did say fatherlessness. OK, and, good. Fatherlessness. Uh, yeah. So fatherlessness, he mentioned. Um, uh, um. I would have just had more of a, a general discrimination in, in education because boys are treated like girls in schools is very specific. I guess what I mean, that's what I mean by that. Yeah. I just figured, you know, discrimination in education. I, like I would, I would mark that. Defective girls, as... like defective girls. Yeah, boys okay. are treated like defective girls. I, I get girls. what you're saying. I, I think that yeah. would be, we could cross that one off too. Okay, I did. All right. Okay, All right, almost, the red pill almost wins. Mm. not shocking that okay. they're frustrated by this but i will say one quick thing if i may and i right. appreciate everything that pearl has said here but pearl is part of a cohort of new inheritors of the manosphere mantle who say that they want to speak for men this is like fresh and fit and the whatever podcast and the like the problem with this is is that it's kind of weaponizing male resentment and it's not teaching them to be responsible right. husbands and fathers it's oh, 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 oh there we go there we go. There's the tradcon shit I was waiting for. Okay, here um, it is. Men's responsibility. Men's responsibility. Yep. Um, let me see. Uh, Weaponizing men's resentment. I don't know. There's just, maybe there's. A, I think a mo both sides here is right here. Yeah, my both sides. Yes, my both sides. Yes. Oh shit. Okay. Um. Yeah, my both sides. All right. Let's, let's, uh, let me see. What else? Is women are not responsible. Well, basically, he doesn't say that yet. Okay, let's uh, see. Let's see if he does. Like, because he looks okay. like he's moving towards it. Corporate job and get a harem of women out in Dubai and intimidate them into being attracted to you, just like Andrew Tate. I don't think that's a helpful. Red pill is bad. Oh shit, hurts women yeah, red too. Red pill is bad. Red yeah, the red bad. pill is bad. There yeah, we go. He's really, he's really coming up behind with the, with the yeah. track. Out of, out of the blue. What else do I have to say? Um, does it women most affected? Because that's one of the well. It's, it's I guess when really when Tradcon start when when, when when Tradcon start talking about the red pill, right, and they they have like a negative attitude towards it, it usually comes from a place of saying this is bad because it hurts women. Like yeah. we should do something about this, but my fear is it's like mo, mo right wing backlash. Like my fear is that like I don't want to do anything about it until it looks like women might be in danger. Now I want to step in there and like you know. Forget oh, all the suicides, God. forget all the workplace deaths, forget about the guys that don't can't see their children, forget about the guys who get destroyed in divorce court, forget about the guys who are me too forget about the guys who go to jail, like, you know, for crimes they didn't commit because women accuse them of shit. Forget about all of that. I'm not, I don't see it, I don't see it, I don't see it. Then suddenly some men are like, you know what? I'm really angry about this and I'm gonna go watch like a red pill influencer that's basically gonna tell me something that you know, will help me understand what's going on. Oh, wait a minute, that might hurt women. I gotta step in now. Like that, you know, and, and it's not to, not to fix any of these problems. Not to fix any of these problems. Not to fix these legal problems. Not to fix the political problems, but only because I don't, I just want the men to stop being angry at the women. Mm. Oh yeah. That, I mean, that's no, that's I, what that's the Connor position from what I. And can there's know. no real there's no recognition that the red pill is actually what. And I can I'm actually thinking of doing a solo video, putting it on the channel that just goes through Hannah Cox and explains how she demonstrates that the red pill is in response to women's attitude towards relationships that have gone from sort of uh, you know coming together and working. through to overcome what life throws you at you and through whatever means you can together into a combative uh well basically a war zone well turn yeah turning the turning relationships into a battlefield 
Uh, yeah, of antagonism, the, right. Yeah, that, yeah, Hannah Cox demonstrates by saying that this is the ideal approach for a woman, and this is something that other people didn't pick up about what she was saying, you know, and she apparently doesn't pick up about what she's saying. And she's basically pointing to a woman who has, who sees relationships as a battlefield, as the ideal approach to a relationship. And it's like, well, the red pill is in response to that. And that is directly downstream of feminism, m making the relationship between men and women out to be one of oppression. Like yep. when you, when you say that men want to oppress women, when you say this so fun, you, 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 you turn in women's minds, relationships into battlefields and the red pill is in response to that. You know, they're, that they're, they're trying to navigate a world in which they don't really have a companionate relationship with women, they end up in a battle with them. And here's the other thing. By presenting relationships in these terms, women think that this is normal. That's the other thing. I was like listening to this woman. I'm like, you're doing a freaking lot of work there. Like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that work. I'd just kick the guy out of my life. He's not, he's not, like, if you are looking at your relationship with a man or anyone in terms of, you know, staying detached, you know, centering yourself emotionally, avoiding becoming a victim of him. And like, look, why are you even engaging with this person? If you are framing it in terms of victimhood and you're framing it in terms of, well, I can thrive and grow despite him. Well, why do you have him in your life if he doesn't help you thrive and grow? If he doesn't yep. protect you from being a victim? If he doesn't like make your life easier in some way, it doesn't mean you have to become totally dependent on him, but there's a concept of codependence. And when you choose somebody who is a net benefit to your life in a companionate way, then you're not having these, these, these thoughts about him. You're not like, oh, I'm not gonna let him turn me into a victim. I'm gonna remain detached and independent and I'm gonna thrive without him. Like what, what kind of relationship, how, who talks about their relationships in those terms? And it makes women think that that's normal, that that's all they're going to get from a man, which paradoxically mm -hmm. makes them tolerate bullshit that they don't really, they really shouldn't. Like this is, and this is the problem. Like I see these red pill guys who are like, you know, well, this is, this is the, this is the attitude women bring to relationships. We're going to have to play this game. We are going to have to trigger these patterns, these thought patterns. And actually, you know, you're you're going to try to retain your sense of decency while triggering these thought these these particular patterns that um, make her think that you're desirable. Well, yeah, wouldn't it be good for men who are basically decent to learn how to become desirable to women in the same way these dark triad alpha assholes are? Because ultimately, if they can do that, then maybe we have a chance at having some people form relationships. And yet the trad cons are like, oh my god, what do I, what, 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 you have a problem with that. Yep. You have a problem, well, okay. The only way, you, you can't go at men and say, well, you, you're responding to the situation as it is and developing strategies to deal with it. That's what men do. Yes. If you want to change the situation, you got to go to women and say, hey, what the hell, lady? Exactly. And I, I but, don't see them doing that. But how, the but yeah, they're not. But, but uh, Allison, how, how, how could they change anything? Don't, don't you know? know? Literally just maybe a hundred or so years ago, hundred and such a few years ago that women were still viewed as chattel. Yeah. I think there's an echo on that. <laughs> no, is there? I don't hear it. I hear it. Maybe the, do? the yeah, guys, send us a message. If you still guys, do you still hear the echo on that? I thought I but, fixed that. Yeah, well, hopefully you did. Maybe it's just me. But anyway, my, my point is that the only people who are calling women out is us, as far as I can tell. I don't see this with the, with the more centrist or traditionalist or I don't even, even libertarian. They're saying no echo for them. Okay, good. Then it's just me. Great. Perfect. Women were right. still viewed as chattel. Okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. All right. I'm just saying that the only people who are pointing this out is us. Have you noticed yes. that? Like we're, we're saying, okay, if you want to change this, men are reacting to women because that's what men do. Women present what they want and how they want it. And men figure out how to do it. 
That's what the red pillars are doing. They're reacting to women. It's women who are bringing this attitude of combat to a relationship. Mm -hmm. And if you are going to have any, any partnerships at all, then the average man, the average decent man needs to be able to navigate that attitude of combat. So eventually she, he can, I don't know, defeat the Amazon queen and, and, and grab her girdle and marry her, wife her yeah. up. Who God yeah. knows what, what, but, but at least there's a chance. But if you're just yep. going after men for, for doing this, it's like, no, that's not that you're, you've got the causality reversed. And it, honestly, the only way that this is going to work. And again, what do trad cons expect from men to go to a woman and hit her over the head with a club and drag her back to their cave? They have to play the game on women's terms. Well, because, yeah, I mean, women have the apparatus at their disposal. It's yeah, like Mike's old to. cartoon about the bazooka. Well, what they are you going to do? They have the bazooka, you know? Yeah, they, they have to play <laughs> the game on women's terms. And these are yeah. the terms being set. And the fact that you find it distasteful, well, okay, I know your instinct is, when you find something distasteful is to find the nearest man to blame, but that's not what's going on here. The only yep. way to change this is to change women's attitude towards men. Which means you got to kick out the feminism. Yep. And part of the way to do that is to realize there was no oppression in the past. Women always worked. Women always participated. Hell, through most of, most of the history prior to us having police and a judicial system that made it out actual punishment, like that's something we had to earn through excess productivity. There was no way we could have paid for a penal system 200, 300 years ago. You know how they dealt with that? Well, maybe 200 and 300, you know, like 400, 500 years ago, post Renaissance. You know how they dealt with things? They would fine people for engaging in crimes, which itself was a evolution away from what happened before, which was uh, tribal conflict, like uh, honor-based society in which if you aggressed or you did something against one tribe, the other tribe was had themselves. They would have to take redress. They would have to, for example, if you killed their their son, they would kill your son. You know, if you raped their daughter, they would probably kill the, the guy who raped it. And a couple upper men raped her and other men in the tribe. Right? That this would be they would have to deal with any kind of harm or uh, what we would consider crime in terms of them, you know, all the men in their tribe coming to arms and taking it out of the men of the other tribe. That's how they dealt with injustices. It was an honor-based culture, right? Yeah. Then we evolved into a fine-based culture in which people would accept a fine in exchange for, you know, lynching, basically. So now they would go to a judge. A judge would say, okay, this, this, they owe you this much for killing your son they owe you this much for killing your daughter they owe you this much for raping your daughter it wasn't an issue of property it was that they were moving away from this endless cycles of reprisal which is what these these tribal these honor-based tribal systems create endless cycles of reprisal oh yeah maybe maybe our son raped your daughter but you killed 10 of our our women therefore you you we need to go kill 20 of your people and then on and on and on and on and on it would go for generations creating a situation that you you couldn't create prosperity because there was this constant conflict so they changed that they made it a fine based system they also did that way back in like the 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 um the, the old testament right but that created a way of peaceably ending these conflicts and then and then the feminists look back at this and they're like oh my god they're literally chattel no, they weren't literally chattel. These were fines for crimes in a time where they couldn't afford to imprison people and they didn't want to start more tribal warfare, right? That's how they ended it. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand any of this context. They just pick out a little bit and then, and then throw it out like, oh my God, oh my God. You don't know a damn thing about how societies work, ladies. Shut up. Okay, shut up. This was something we had to earn. The penal ju the, the judicial system was something we had to develop over eons. And it, and the fine system was its pre predecessor. 
And again, that fine system created a much more peaceful system of dealing with problems. So if, uh, if, if you actually, and honestly, in that system, it was most likely, you know, uh, lynching still existed because if you did indeed rape the daughter of another tribe, you're going to get your ass lynched. They weren't going to accept a fine. But if you seduce the daughter, seduce the daughter of another tribe, they might accept a fine and the expectation that you marry her. Right? Okay? And throughout this system of fines, of, use, of using fines to punish crimes, guess what? Women, in many places, if you killed a woman, you owed more money to her family than if you killed yes. a man. So the, the crime of killing a woman... The crime of they, they actually knew they, they actually differentiated the crime of killing a woman as worse than the crime of killing a man in many places. As far as as far as I know, according to the, Brit the uh, Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Britannica, in every place or most places where there was Saxon law and the, and the, the idea that the, the weir Weirgeld existed. So they mm -hmm. actually came down harder on people who killed women throughout the history in which men hated women and oppressed them and treated them like chattel. And they're using that. They're using the fact that if you killed a woman, you owed more, you were punished more as evidence that women were treated as lesser. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you f okay? We should get back to our bingo. Oh yeah, a, right. There's a we video. We should do an Allison rant. I got a, I got a super. We can make that its own video. I think. I got a super yeah. chat from Zeranx. He gave us five bucks and said, "What Allison just said is what Connor is familiar with. What he doesn't know is Paul Elam's point that I had Brian read from a super chat on August 14th, 2023. I totally remember that. Not. Richard Bier then gives us a super chow. And for five dollars and says tribal honor warfare over every slight did prevent overpopulation though. Yeah, maybe I'm that's go what to Greta the, uh, Thunberg about that. Maybe that's what um, the WEF is is trying to get us towards. Yeah. We're supposed to be fighting over the grain, the last remaining silo of grain. That well, something. I mean, they probably do stoke a lot of the racial tension to try and get mm. people killed to reduce the population. I mean, I don't think that's radical at all. I I could totally see them doing that, but let's get back to this. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Look, firstly, I'm going to go to Anna uh, on this, and then we'll uh, and then we'll let Pearl respond to all of that, obviously. Um, so, uh, Anna, you've heard what Connor said. There. That's that's Connor's lived experience, right? Do you do you disagree with Connor's lived experience here? <laughs> Men don't have lived experience. <laughs> well, only women do. Of course, I do. Only a man could make feminism uh, about him. I mean, it really is nothing. Oh shit! Wait, I. That you're a man. It's one of the things. Only a man. It look. It's it is. It's one of the things. You see it. Only, Only a man. man who make feminism this, about him. Okay, we're almost. It's almost full. It's almost full. You're a, only a man can make feminism about him because it's about equality, but it's also only about women. Um, Zarings gives us another five dollars and says you don't remember it. That's why I mentioned the date because I looked it up before sending the super chat. You might be able to look it up. I I don't know. It's kind of buried in our history. Um, if it's from August. Just, why don't but, you just send the actual quote? Yeah, don't send it as a super chat. Just yeah, just, um, just just Well, it might it. be too long to put in us in uh in the chat. Well then do a super chow. You got plenty of room for that if you want to do that. If you need okay. the room, just do, don't don't elude. To... Just just get right in there and just Let's get put back it to out this. There. Okay. Thing to do with men. It's about moving women forward, and men oh, should good welcome Lord, like, it. What? Okay. The real men will welcome it. Starting okay, stop it. Oh, the real men will welcome it. Oh, I should have put real man on there. That that would have yeah, been good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me. Let me. Okay. So, feminism isn't about men, but you really appeal to men in order to insult people, don't you, lady? Well, you also question men's identity as men. Yeah, uh, yeah. by saying only a real a real man wouldn't have a problem with it. Yeah, okay, well, okay, so feminism isn't about men. It just dictates what real men are. Like it, it yeah. seems like you, you feminism is about deciding what makes a good or real man. So it 100% is about men. 
oh good lord like yeah this these, this is levels of fuck i didn't <laughs> I know okay. that I know if I actually thought really carefully about this, I could, I could dissect the to I could dissect these levels, these shifting levels of fuck down to the very, the very foundation of fuck, and and present it in a logical format, which would clearly illustrate how much of a destructive loon she is. But I do not believe we have time for that, so let's keep going. All right, let's keep going setting and then moving out into the world into uh business you know what it into is? education you know what it is what she's just it's like she's just all she does is spout hurtful talking points that's it just insult people and minimize them and take away their voice this is a feminist folks like mm -hmm. all she's done this entire freaking time is insult people and attempt to take away their voice. Yeah, she's like, uh, well, yes, that's what they do. We can't. ...into culture. It should all be a joint thing. So it's about women. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It so... needs everybody to get on board. So. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It's about women, but it needs every. So it is about men. Because it needs men to get only, on board. Only in the, insofar as how they can basically support feminism. They have to do the work, but they so don't get any of the credit. things of men, but it's not about men. Okay, uh, like I said, shifting layers of fuck. If I, if we had the time, I could dissect them down to the foundation of fuck, but we don't have the time. So let's keep going. Let's finish the bingo. Oh, I got a super... No, wait, I already read that one. I got another super chow from Richard, but I guess it didn't go through. He he said, did you miss my super chow about the spirit science episode? It may have been too long to transfer directly into the show chat screen. I didn't see it in the live chat, but let me look in the Discord real quick. Oh, yeah, there is something here. I'll read it. It didn't show up in the chat, though, for some reason. Uh, let me just double check it. Maybe it did, and I, I it was too big. Yeah, for some reason, it didn't go through the um, chat. Okay. So he gave us... Thank you for the $5 uh, with the super spirit science thing. And then he gave us another 5 before that and said, According to a spirit science episode on the island of Atlantis, people lived without masculine oppression where the island was in harmony with the chakra of the world and the population was feminine-centric and had the mentality of teenage girls until these masculine types showed up from Mars who used a device that resembles a Star of David rotated in three dimensions. They brought technological gadgets and disrupted their social order and then in instituted a patriarchal system. When it became pear-shaped, these masculine oppressors tried to use the device to escape, but because it was incorrectly built, it opened up a portal to the underworld of Scientology. Next time you have Teal on to talk about occult feminism, you might want to add this into the mix. What did I just read? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Thank you, Richard. I feel partly educated and partly really confused. We did maybe this. a little we traumatized. Did this, we did this episode. Maybe it was during the, the time where you were having a bit of difficulty. Um it, August? We did this... No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm August. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably in 2000 like guys it was probably in 2022 there was uh there were some parts of 2022 which i think i i, I got i you... actually a year ago uh a year ago like to the almost to the day i got out of the hospital so yeah but um and, it might have been Brian before like really... like maybe the prior week or two but i've been no, it, since been doing this for... i've been in the hospital a couple of times <laughs> so since doing this well since oh, starting yeah, okay. hbr I've, I've had cancer okay, so, and like just, just to give you guys an idea john or sorry brian was very sick in 2022 and i think mm. there's a few months where they the memory correct me if yeah I'm i have wrong, a, i have gaps in my memory can... from late 2020 yeah so. so the spirit science episode he may have not remembered this is exactly this is exactly what was in that spirit science episode <laughs> Was Teal Deer there for that, or or are you no, asking me to like bring him on board? No, we, we no, no, I think. Went, okay. We we went through it together, 
And, was it a paper? Uh, no, it was a it was it Spirit Science is a YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, I don't remember. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> All right, let's let's keep going. All right, let's keep going. Uh, what you okay. just said is a load of nonsense. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. Pearl, I think a lot of people might think, you know, what Connor's just said about you there is quite unfair. Look, your your views on this. Well, what did he say about me that was unfair? Well, the, the, you, I think, I, I, forgive me, I don't want to paraphrase here, but maybe say that it was a bit of a, a lack of authenticity She's or something even... like that, you know, uh, uh, maybe kind of pissing men against each other. But I, I, I don't know if that's necessarily oh, true. Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, you wait, seem, wait, wait. You seem to be... So yeah. didn't he also have something that hit... He said that the red pill, what did he say, that is it weaponizes male resentment? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah like the, the red pill the, the, bad. The it. current iteration of the Manosphere, yeah. And I'm just saying, like, it's only going to get more and more vocal as, as if you guys keep ignoring what we're saying. Yeah. So, like, you, this is you're just creating the conditions for this to grow. Okay. Hey. To be honest with you, pretty genuine and cast iron oh, in your view. Aren't you really? I mean, I know a lot of the guys that run these shows, these women are coming in their own free will. So I, I don't really understand how that's like utilizing male resentment. But oh, what oh, I actually oh, wanted to. Oh, yeah, that's good. No, that's true. I'm glad she said that, man. I'm really sick and tired of people saying, you know, like Sydney Watson even was like, how can you, how can you take advantage of these poor women that are coming on the whatever? They're going there of their own free will, they're going there to promote their platform. They're growing. They're going there because they want to become more famous. That's why they go on there. They're not stupid. They're not children. They're grown. Okay. Wait. 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 There's uh, red pill bingo. Women should be adults. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Women should be adults. Oh, let me get back on the screen. Uh, where? Okay. Women should be adults. Thank you, Pearl. There you go. I think. I honestly think I heard her say repeal the nineteenth, but. Let's <laughs> I maybe may okay. Let's just. I'm not sure, but I think I. Heard she her didn't. Say that. She just said that. All, all she said. What well, was the other woman that said uh, that you don't think the women should vote? And Pearl said no, that no, I no. think that women only. They you don't. Do you know why women didn't have the vote? And she basically said because men were conscripted. So, I mean, okay, it's not the whole story, but it's what she said. Okay, let's keep going. All right. To, to address more importantly, why should women be propped up? Why? Why do we need to be pushed forward? If you are a competent woman, you have every opportunity that you could possibly have. I don't need feminists to push me up because I'm smart and I do well on my own. You know, all I'm hearing from feminists is a bunch of excuses. A bunch of excuses. I want special privileges and special treatment that I don't deserve. Okay. LeBron takes a seat back. Da 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 da. Well, I don't know if I see anything here. Um, her smug see. face is sort of amusing. Her, yeah, she's a little. She's got a smug face. But all right, we'll get back. Let's see. I think they're just wrapping it up here. Right, all yep. of you. Thank, Matt, thank you. That was very. That was very lovely. We are. We are. We are going to knock it on the head there now. Thank you very much, all of you. Really, really, really insightful stuff. So great stuff. Look, uh, look who do you agree with? Okay. As research finds, that it is a view increasingly being held by Gen Z boys. Has feminism done more harm than good? Tonda on X says the problem isn't. Oh well, we got some people with comments. I guess we could look at some. X. But mm. we didn't. Nobody won. It got close. No, wait, I, I'm honestly, I'm pretty sure that at some point. Pearl said that she thought we should repeal the 19th, but she was being talked over by the woman. Oh, yeah. Um, I, but that's I not a win, name. though. That's not, a win. not a win. She no, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be? Because she would have... Mm. No, no. She would have repeal the 19th, top G, women should be adults, men keep the country running. Yeah, I guess so. Did she, okay. she didn't mention Tate. Not, not like, kind of in a indifferent way. But I'll give it to you. Because this is the end of the video. You want to hear what the no, people... No, no, um... we should get it genuinely. Uh, but I'll have to... I guess I'll have to say... Um, I'll leave it up to the to the audience. Do you think that the... Do you think that the Red yeah. Bull Bingo won? Or did... Uh, did Feminist Bingo win? No. No, the no? Feminist didn't win. No, she... She got close, though. She had... But... Uh, if she would have uh, said patriarchy, that would have been it. Oh or if she God. would have said that oh. Connor has a small PP or something. Let's let's uh, or that men have have no penis. That that would okay. have been that would have been the victory right there. 
Okay, let's go to uh, let's go to. Uh, I think she was definitely alluding to mansplaining. Oh, definitely. Know. Yeah. All right. Well, no, Maybe. that's when 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 she said, "Well, of course you're gonna have a man come here and say something, whatever." Like men can't speak on feminism, right? Okay. All right. Um, let's 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 look at this. Uh, how many squares got cut got uh, chopped off there for each of them? I shouldn't say um, chopped. How many for the feminist? How many got? Feminist, uh, how many? Okay, so it's uh, 16 squares, and she's got three, five, uh, eight, nine squares. Nine squares. Nine, nine squares. So the la fact that she didn't get bingo was just sheer It's It was just the luck of the draw. It's just luck the way the it Because she didn't say, well, mansplaining would still not be a victory, but, um, or, but patriarchy would have been. Like, patriarchy... Okay misogyny she didn't say misogyny which is kind of amazing <laughs> so um because that would have been it she would have won like or at least like i don't know if like winning this feminist bingo is a win for the feminist because it just means we know what they're gonna say so like you know what we do we should what? honestly like we should each take a card like me and you and then we should fight against each other and see who yeah. wins at the end and yeah. then okay but but okay how many isn't all bingo one? just luck though Okay, so yeah, 16, right. wait, 3, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then on the red pill bingo, we got 1, uh, 7, 8, 9. So it's a tie. And then Ooh. Tradcon got 3. Uh, but okay. I think that Connor kind of contributed to pearls because Connor's yeah. kind of purple pilled. Yeah. So I guess that, you yeah. know. We um, should probably have kept it cleaner and just had him be the trad con bingo. Yeah, I, I think the feminist bingo, it, it, it's it's yeah, probably it the one that gets the most crosses. But that's it because again, their their talking points are so predictable. So of course yeah, it's but, gonna it's gonna fill up. But here's the other thing, like does red pill bingo deserve really to be called bingo? Like what? I, I mean these aren't platitudes, these are challenges to existing. Oh no, I, I wouldn't yeah, I wouldn't classify them as negative like yeah. like having i think that like the stuff that you know mras talk about i mean they're just real things you know but i just thought mm -hmm. well it could be fun to do multiple cards with different stuff on them so i'm just thinking about having fun that's all i thought it was fun oh i got a xerang xerang gave us that super chow that he was promising. yeah okay before we get into the super chow so i think that we can safely say that if we if we keep pearl to her own card and um the uh the gen connor. z dude connor to his own card then feminism trounced feminism yeah, won every like like it, usual it won like won. it always does yeah. <laughs> in this it it, in, uh, it, it manages to be both the victor and the victim at the same time it's like as always you know it is it is like the most powerful position to be in if it was like a saying uh, somebody said where it's like, you know, you can be, you can have all of the power, but appear to be the weakest. Um, and that's what they do. So. Yeah. All right. Go ahead and read that. All right. Here's a super child from Zeranx for $5. Thank you, Zeranx. He gives us uh, five bucks and says red pill philosophy, at least as I understand it, reduced to its core wisdom informs us that the enemy, the real enemy is within. It's not women that get us. It's our native and mindless attachment to them. It's not gynocentrism. It's our willingness to enslave ourselves by making sacrosanct its crazy dictates. It's not consumerism. It's our underdeveloped values and our attachment to things, our worship of objects and the imagined status that they bring. That's the beauty of red pill philosophy. It doesn't require the world to change for us to reap the benefits if we want to erase the impact of consumerism in our lives. The only thing we need to destroy is our credit cards, not Walmart, not Ikea, not Starbucks or Target, but the part of ourselves that is foolish enough to believe and think that those things are important. Red pill men don't seek to destroy marriage. They just quit participating in it. Our reaction to this stupidity of marriage is a strike, not a war. Red pill men place the onus for change where it belongs on ourselves. That is the freedom. It's the only answer that was ever needed. All Elam. Yeah, I don't think that so. this is what red pill is right now. Well, I think it's men saying, you know, like... Um, no, I because... understand what Paul is saying, but what red pill has evolved to be is not... Like, that sounds much more MGTOW than what 
it seems like red pill has is now yeah well i yeah. think that red pill still wants to be able to do the thing you know like find a partner marry them and have yeah. children like this yeah, is exactly. what most men want like that'll never change and unless you know we want to live in a world where all of that's gone and it's just savagery and like the you know the strong uh the strong survive and all of that i mean you know men are going to try to work within a system that is civil and uh that's why that has to change i mean i saw like a mm -hmm. really interesting three-way was that a three-way conversation between um benjamin boyce andrew wilson and somebody else some other guy oh rollo was there it was like three or four guys and they were talking about like you know what needs to change i thought it was a really interesting i mean rollo doesn't really add much but i thought it was an interesting conversation because there was a reality that they had to face which is no matter how like how much you man up women are gonna women and that has to be that's like the only thing that can change and i was like yes finally finally you guys are getting it it doesn't matter how alpha you are if women are are not gonna play ball it's the only thing that has to change so yeah and unfortunately um, that's the hardest thing and it is the hardest thing because the, there's like the hardest thing is for people to say you know to have an expectation from women from i mean women. like i wouldn't even say a criticism i mean just like an expectation but so, here's the thing this is what i've seen throughout history okay gynocentrism is pretty much a constant what isn't a constant yep. is whether or not women take responsibility for it yep and uh, honestly like if you look back through history it is women keeping other women in check i i actually appreciate something that jordan peterson said mm -hmm. uh women you got to keep your crazy sisters in check he's right yep. um unfortunately that is the hardest road to hoe and it's i think it's easier to be honest it's easier for men to continue to take responsibility and me saying this and i'm going to qualify this after i say it it's easier for men to take responsibility than it is to make women take responsibility mm -hmm. and i think that it's true that men have to protect themselves they have to step up and do what they can in this society to they could step up and take the responsibilities that they can take in this society that's what i agree with with that with that uh, quote from paul elam but at the end of the day the hardest thing for men to do is to make women take responsibility and that is the only thing that is really going to change things yeah. on a fundamental level and the solution to what we're seeing now is you can't live with these with this this level like the, the insanity that i see in women you can't live with it and the only way to get rid of it is for them to take responsibility. And if you if you actually like I've been doing a lot of research into old folk tales and fairy tales and a lot of that stuff had a thread of women taking responsibility that was like it was really critical in these stories. It was a critical element of these stories that women weren't just fine on their own or just like just just slooping along being a woman and that was all you needed no just slooping along being a princess that's all you needed no if you actually read the fairy tales they very much were about women taking responsibility for their circumstances even when those circumstances were unjust that was really critical like there's situations where women were thrust into things that they never asked for they never chose but they still had to face with courage and intelligence and wisdom or they would be destroyed by them Yep. And that was, an, I think, a really critical message that we, we just don't have for women anymore. And it was all over the place, like with those folk tales. Like, you know, sh shit happens, but that's not the point. What matters is how you deal with it as a young woman dealing with, you know, the shit that's happening. And that's there. That message is there. It's very clear. And, you, you, like, I think people underestimate the, the role that these stories would have in the development of people during those times. This was their only, these were their only forms of entertainment, their only forms of education outside of the church, which itself had women taking responsibility for very unjust circumstances. Like there's mm -hmm. a lot of Christian martyrs who, you know, female Christian martyrs, well, why were they martyred? 
Well, you know, the, the circumstances were just, they had thought crimes. They engaged in thought crimes. That's it. And they, they, they refused to repent or to disavow their beliefs. And they were murdered, basically, for it. You know, yep. so the, 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 we have this whole history of recognizing the importance of women taking responsibility that is gone. Guys, it is, there's a huge void where it used to be. And it shows in women. And mm. the only way to change that is to somehow convince women that their lives are meaningless noise at this point without responsibility, which is the God's honest truth. A life without responsibility is meaningless noise. It is not a life. Okay. All right. I got a super chat. Yeah. I think we should wrap it up because I got to pick up the wife. Um... I got a super chat from Iggy Thunders for $5. And he says, concerning Tarzan, he was in fact a genius. He taught himself how to read French and English in the pulps. Also killed a cheetah with a knotted rope. Yeah, we. I mean, yeah, he was badass. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like, oh no, the Disney version is... Obviously not. <laughs> uh, all right, well, thank you for the super chat, uh, Iggy Thunders. And... I guess that's My it. The point is, I don't oh. think the me, me, Jane, you, Tarzan thing was really like a, a statement on. We were we were making a joke about what she, what feminists would think a man should do. Yeah. that's what I'm. That's what we were doing. Yeah. Um, okay. we weren't obviously making a, uh, a an opinion of Tarzan. Um, no. because because feminists would like they would say that they they wouldn't know that he was in fact a genius. They would only know the Disney movie because they don't actually culture themselves very much. They watch yeah, cartoons the and they base movie. reality on it. Even what? In the Disney movie, he was pretty he was pretty with it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But I'm saying it's not like what was that movie? Do you remember what was it called Greystoke? It came out like before, like in the eighties. With like Christopher mm, Lambert yeah. and he played Tarzan. Do you guys remember that? It's called Greystoke, I think. Um, anyway. There have been better Tarzans. That are more accurate, I think. Um, so I wanted to point out, I saw some new people in the chat and I wanted to say hello to the new people. I see a few actually, uh, also cool. on Rumble. So yeah, greetings, welcome. I, I see that some of them do have like a little bit of experience with this material. So I hope that you guys will stick around, maybe subscribe to the channel. Um, we have shows like uh, all week and uh, they are varying degrees of dense material mm -hmm. so if you're okay with that uh this is the kind of stuff that we are kind of into so yeah although i think that the i think the bingo really helps to well you know i'm just trying to find bingo. ways to make this stuff fun because sometimes it can be you know it's just like really it's just thick thick. thick yeah it's thick this, this, but this, if you can make it fun then let's make it dummy fun. thummy thick yeah dummy like we could thick. do like i don't know hangman i don't know you can do stuff like <laughs> Hey, man. Yeah. Right. yeah. Like, Let's do some mahjong. Hang man. I don't know how you could incorporate it into like the material, but I think I could, there's a way, you know, <laughs> to incorporate hangman or like mm. wheel of fortune. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> but anyway, um, that, yeah. yeah so feminist so wheel of fortune. Yeah. Oh, so no, welcome um, to the new, welcome to the channel guys. Please subscribe. Wheel of fortune. Which one is the one with the, the letters? That that's wheel of fortune where you spin the oh, wheel and then you you say can i have a and you ask for a consonant and occasionally oh you God. get a vowel and you have to solve the puzzle i think i'm really ignorant of my game shows well it's been a while i mean i don't do game shows even still come on like i used to love them you know one of my yeah. favorites was uh oh man press your luck i don't know i mean because of the whammy i like press your luck but also um there's the the, the uh, hollywood squares it can mm. be fun yeah uh, it's tic-tac-toe, basically. That's another thing we can do. I don't know. I'm, I'm learning all kinds of neat things. Like, I, in, on, my, on the gaming channel, I have an AI, and the AI answers questions. And, and the AI is pretty sharp. I mean, basically, it's an NPC. But, it's, um, but it is pretty, it's pretty interesting. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm looking at... St everything I try over there is stuff that I'm hoping that will... You know, if it's not too distracting, I'll bring it over here. So, mm. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I, I, I think that this chant, the, the, the show here is already, I, I mean, you got me, you don't need something to, to construct more <laughs> distractions, right? True. 
But I mean, like, even if it's a simple bot that just, like, you know, says hello to people when they first mm, join. Yeah, that would And encourages nice, them yeah. to, to, to comment and post. That's all. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fine. Okay, let's finish this off and... and uh, yeah, gotta, let's let's do it. Do you want me to, to play my, the rest of the editor. video? Yeah, let's just... let's Because he, 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 he teased us with a bit of... Yeah, he's playing some is, comments from people. In the no, but not just comments. There's also a poll at the end. I oh, yeah, so. let's see if... I don't know if oh, he's going to get to uh, it, Anybody who's watched this, tell me if... If Pearl did say repeal the 19th, because I'm pretty sure she did at one point. I just missed it. Like, I heard it. And I'm like, okay, I, did I hear that correctly? She may. Have, she, may. She, does, she does that this, to troll people. The sound on this video is so bad. And for whatever reason, they decided the feminists should have priority. Yeah. Either that or she's just constantly No, she's shouting. just loud. Is <laughs> <laughs> her DNA it. to just operate at a higher octave than everybody else? All right. There isn't so much feminism, but more that white working class boys are being left behind with no legislation to support them. Yeah, I think. That's yeah, that's feminism. <laughs> that's what... Well, it's feminism is the biggest excuse for why that's justified, right? Yeah, it, well, femi that's that's what, that's what, I mean, it's literally that. Like, yeah, it's feminism playing. plus intersectionality equals white working class boys being left behind with no legislation to support them. That's literally yeah, that's all it is. Thing. If they complain, then what are they doing? They are just, it's just a backlash. Yep. They're complaining about losing their privilege, which they shouldn't have had in the first place. So those complaints are meaningless or nullified. They're, they're, they're just misogyny. You see how that yep. works? If that's how feminism just removes any consideration for their issues. Yeah. Okay. Let's hear okay. the next one. There's a lot of truth to that. Elliot says, it depends on the type of feminism you're talking about. Early feminism was mostly positive, but third Ugh. wave feminism is mostly negative and divisive and demonizes men. Again, a lot of great comments so far tonight. Diana says, yes, it. Oh my God. Well, I, I don't know how to make these stupid things that pop up. Just Don't worry about but, it. Um... Just let him read it. Okay. Just let him read it. We're, there's, has, there's one last and thing. I say that as a woman myself. Right, okay, to be fair, not a huge amount. So a woman agrees that it, it's, you know, well, yeah, like there not are, good for I, What I've noticed, there's more and more women who are agreeing with this, that feminism is, is... But the thing is that they need to not just realize that it's bad now. It's always been bad. Yep. And it completely, it locks women into a cage because they think that they needed feminism in the past to have lives worth living and the truth is that women always did okay let's keep let's yep. finish this off okay. not shades of gray in the inbox there but 80 percent of you think that feminism has done more harm than good wow 80 <laughs> percent whoa that that woman was not helping that her that's cause. heartwarming yeah i don't think that woman helped her case no but well. it's like she's what did she do she just insulted people she just condemned them and uh and, and she just took away their voice yeah like what the hell was that like is, what is she trying to what you are demonstrating feminism yeah you're demonstrating feminism is a tool of control and abuse congratulations like more and more people are waking up to that not just yeah. men but also women all right so, well yeah uh, okay so i got another super chow and then i'm, I'm oh. done i gotta go pick up Lindsay. so Zarex gives us five bucks and says the reason i mentioned paul's statement is there is something to get from it the notion of red pill we're defaulting is being attacked there's a correlation between what paul said and what coach greg adams says with the free agent lifestyle while we play on the field spoilers have decided to focus on uh no one will go back to unearth paul's sentiments or coach greg adams that's going to set us back while society continues to fall well that's because those those are good points uh, i actually am working on something that i'm going to be talking about with regards to uh it sort of connects to what paul said and i i spoke to paul about it um i do think that it it's it's probably all i will say is we're in this we're we're in the state we're in with boys by design and I'm gonna explain that. Um, and it, it's it's the only way men can get, like, essentially a, a, a sense of self-actualization without women, or at least not as women as the primary reward, because that's what they're they're seeking now. You know, is that women are the are the proof of concept of their identity, and I think that's got to take a back seat to something else. But how do you replace that? And I have like an yeah. idea. So. But um, that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, okay, I think we're done.
Yep. All right. So if you enjoyed this content and you would like to see more of it and support the show, please go to feedthebadger.com slash subscribe to set up a subscription and you'll get access to after shows. And depending on your subscription level, you can also join us for conversation uh, in the after shows. So once again, that's feedthebadger.com slash subscribe. And if you want to send us a message, if you have any commentary on anything that was discussed during the show, you want to tell us we're not screaming into the void, then please go to feedthebadger.com slash just the tip and throw a few shekels in the hat and give us the edification of your wisdoms. So once again, that's feed, feedthebadger.com slash just the tip to send us a comment. All right, back to you, Brian. All right. Well, if you guys like this video, please hit like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications so you know when our shows go live. And leave us a comment. Let us know what you guys think about what we discussed on the show today. You can find a link to all of this stuff, not the bingo cards, but the uh, the, the article as well as this video in the description. Uh, and please, please, please share this video because sharing is caring. Thanks, guys, so much for coming on today's episode of Maintaining Frame. And we'll talk to you all in the next video. See you tomorrow, guys are machines dude okay they are literal machines they are talking point machines they are impossible to fucking deal with especially if you have like especially if you have like a, a couple dudes who have good memory on top of that too holy shit you're fucked